In this video, I'm going to be very vulnerable, open, and honest. I go into my past, I go into controversies, and I also debunk very serious lies about me, including by involving- Hold on! Whoa, that started fast. In this video, I'm going to be very vulnerable, open, and honest. I go into my past, I go into- We- Oh my god, he's editing so fast. I just wanted to see the picture of him. It's okay, Controversies, and I also debunk very serious lies about me, including by involving the police, legal teams, and extensive research. It will get uncomfortable. I will get into why is his video so low is his video guy is his audio low for you guys i don't know why i can't turn it up any more than it is it feels really low details of my life that you probably don't want to hear and i don't particularly want to share either but it feels necessary given the circumstances and honesty and truth is my top priority I yo who edited this video bro it goes smooth you guys have probably noticed i took a long break from youtube and since the face reveal i've hardly really uploaded and i've really focused on other things and separated myself from a lot of the stuff i was doing before you may think that this was due to the hate from the face reveal or for other reasons but really there was something else that happened right after the okay everyone's saying he has adhd he talks fast well jokes on dream we watch videos at two speed here no, that's cool. That's good. That's good. Face reveal. And it really made me step back from what I was doing and have a lot less passion. If you've been on the internet recently, you've probably heard or seen some pretty crazy stuff about me. Whether it's the voice actor of Gumball attacking me or accusations against me regarding grooming, you've probably heard a lot of pretty crazy stuff. I thought it's extremely important for me to make this video and provide as much information as I can. And I just want to right off the bat state as clearly as I can that these allegations are not true. I plan on going to extreme detail to prove that in this video. And to all the people that are spreading lies, fabricating stories, and making false accusations for fun or because they think it's funny. But I don't care. I accept that I'm a horrible person. This is not not funny. This is not a joke. This is people's lives ranging from my own, my family, my employees to actual victims that stories won't be heard or believed in the future because of this. I understand okay. that some things in this video are much more important than others. So I split this video up into chapters and you can skip to and watch the parts that are most important to you. I will say that everything in this video is very relevant. I think they're all vital topics to include because they help clear up my character. So yeah, the video has chapters and if you want to skip around, there's a pinned comment. And again, I realize that nothing in this video is as important as me talking about serious allegations. So I've made it really easy to skip ahead to whatever is most important to you. Just because there's other stuff doesn't mean anything is less important. Monetization. Here's the question. What do we think should happen to people that make false accusations against people? Because we know that the human mind is so complex and we know that people will lie unintentionally and intentionally. I think that there's so much to be said about what we think should happen to people. But what do we do? How do we know the difference between somebody who who distorts reality because they have a mental illness and somebody who distorts reality because they're doing it on purpose. What do you think we should want to do? For me, obviously, I would need to know the difference. So before I cast judgment on someone, I'd really need to know, are you doing this on purpose, purpose, like with malicious intent? Are you in your own mind saying, I know this isn't true, so I'm going to do this? You know what I mean? Or are you saying you know, hey, I think this really happened and I and I feel like this happened and I I feel justified, especially with neurodivergent people, the sense of justice, you know, could really make you want to defend or stand up for people. I saw some other related controversies, like people reacting to things over the weekend. I was trying or week, I was trying to figure out who was who. And one of the girls I found was so like obviously neurodivergent, but she was so her sense of justice was so strong. I forget her name. I think it's like Emery or Amy or something like that. And she she was so strong, but yet so like naive and like so young and kind of just she would say things that weren't true, but I don't think she meant them to be lies. I think she meant them because she's like she would say things like he broke the law, but then did they, you know, it was I was seeing like this real sense of justice. So I want to be obviously open minded and lenient to people that genuinely want to help people, but are doing it wrong. And then people who are maliciously intended like they have malicious intent yeah megan says aimsy yeah aimsy i saw that girl she's like a lesbian or queer she's got like a beanie on and like straight hair and she did like i watched an interview she did a little bit and i watched i skipped around and then i watched like some guy responding to her she seems really passionate but i'm not sure she has the facts yeah i'm not sure don't let me you know talk out of turn here but Mm. on this video is on but every dollar will go to a charity that's linked in the description otherwise i want to start with the biggest lie i have ever told the face leak photo what a cutie pie what a cutie patootie bro was me of course it's from when i was really young and i've lost a lot of weight since then and it wasn't at all representative of what i look like now 
but it was me. Obviously, I said many times that it wasn't, and a lot of people have and still do use that against me to say that I'm dishonest. But the reason I lied about that is because of the face reveal. I'd been planning the face reveal for years. I sacrificed so much by staying inside and avoiding cameras for so long. I mean, I had covers on all my windows, and even to go to the dentist, I left hiding in the back of a car and went to a different state. Yes, I was paranoid. Whoa. I wasn't going to let anyone take that moment away from me. Whatever I had to do to make sure that moment was suspenseful and exciting, I'm sure. Oh, okay. Amesy is 22 and uses all pronouns. Oh, okay, okay. Sure I would have done. And if anything, the face leak photo probably ended up creating more suspense and excitement to see if I was lying or if I actually looked like the leaked picture. Now, of course, there was a lot of personal information attached to the leaked picture, how it was found, where it was. I think this makes sense so far. I, I know a lot of YouTubers have things like this and Dream's a really big brand. Like he's a really big content creator. So I could see him wanting to sort of like fib around the photo to make the reveal more intense. Um, not to mention that people go after like corpse who doesn't want to be shown. And people find ways to leak him. So I will say, you know, regardless, I think this is like, I'm not a big fan of lying, as you guys know. But I think like in terms of branding, it would make sense to admit this is him. But also this doesn't even look like Dream now. You know what I mean? So leaked from so that definitely contributed to why i lied about it i didn't lie because i was ugly or because i was overweight or anything like that and every time i talked about the leaked picture i always mentioned that i struggled with my weight in the past and that mm -hmm. it's disheartening to see people make fun of the very common with streamers and content creators to be you know they're not going to be traditionally like tens you know what i'm saying because most of those people they're not going to have that journey. Like you fall into a category in life, guys. We all fall into categories. And that doesn't mean you're trapped in that category. It's just like it's it's an observation. It's not meant to be malicious. So I'm not surprised that he struggled with his weight. I think a lot of streamers struggle with our mental health. We struggle with a lot of things. So that's not that surprising. <coughs> Deja Vu with the Super Chat says, you're non-biased but still opinionated stance is refreshing to see. Let's go. You hear that, guys? <laughs> now remember, everybody has bias and prejudice, even me. So my bias, I'm sure, will show eventually, but I'm trying. The poor kid for that, which obviously I was the poor kid. And I think that's something I'm willing to admit now because I face revealed. I'm not risking that big. Does he like that side of his face? Because I like this side of my face. I noticed that he always turns. And we all have sides of our face that look a little bit more symmetrical or better. You know, like this is my favorite side of my face. I think he has... Probably because he always turns, right? Moment anymore. And I also feel much more comfortable about my personal he's, information. He's a cutie patootie. He just, I don't know what people expected him to look like, but he looks pretty normal. And how I look and so on. The day the face leak was posted, I was playing a Minecraft tournament and someone called the SWAT team on me. Dream is AFK. I'm clear here. Um. I was put in handcuffs on my front lawn with cops Jesus. with rifles pointing at me. And I was pretty much swatted from that day on almost daily to the point where the reason Sapnet moved in with me before my face reveal was to answer the door when police showed up. Because people started camping outside with cameras to try and reveal my face. Ugh. And I needed someone else to answer the door. When the Ugh, that's so gross, bro. I really, I do not appreciate this lack of introspection from people. So cringe, like going to uh, uh, YouTubers' homes and bothering Julian and... All these people, like, it's just cringe, bro. Don't go to people's houses. Who raised you? The people that were doxing me thought that they had the wrong address. My family ended up getting swatted. And my mom answered the door thinking that it was pizza for her and my little sister. They were held at gunpoint with police helicopters circling Jesus. the neighborhood. People showed up at my house. People showed up at my family's house. The first time I ever got swatted, I made sure not to mention it at all. Funnily enough, I actually got interviewed by a SWAT team member while I was muted and playing Minecraft parkour with the SWAT officer right next to me. But yeah, it's just all to show that even though I was very adamant about denying the face leak, it was much more about the fact that there was so much personal information attached to the Jeez. picture and I wanted as much separation from it as possible. It had nothing to do with how I look. I'm very proud of my weight loss story and I was never ashamed about it at all. I think that it's very encouraging. That's pretty good. He looks cute there. I think he might look better with a beard. Less baby face, you know? But that's cute. I still haven't seen my husband without a beard. <laughs> Yo, imagine being married and never seeing your... I just still haven't seen it, you know? But yeah, like, I, I love a beard. That's a, that's a good look. Encouraging to see people accomplish weight loss. I did it all naturally. I lost hundreds of pounds. Nice. You have not seen me at my... Oh, he looks so good with a beard. What? Heaviest. And it's one of those things that I think is very encouraging to others. I love inspiring people, so it's a story I'm sure I'll tell in the future. But in that moment, it was not the right time to tell it. I feel like right now it's still kind of uncomfortable to talk about it, but it's annoying seeing the same damn picture. So here's some other pictures of me from before I lost weight, just so there's more variety. Oh, he's a cute 
little pumpkin. Now oh moving. Oh my gosh. Is that way? Hold Let's up. Wait. Just so there's more variety. Now that. The neck beard, the hair, the fatness, we love to see it, bro. That, that's like a basement dwelling Minecrafter if I ever did see one. And now he's got 30 million subbies. You know what? We love to see it. Now moving on to one of the most awesome. Yes, ma'am. Yippie says he had, he glue up. He glue up. It's about controversies. The cheating scandal. I'm going to be pretty concise with this one. Oh, speedrun cheating. Guys, getting into the gaming bubble, let's go. Because it's been covered a million times and most of you are probably pretty sick of hearing about it, but it's still really important to talk about. It's one of the most frequent reasons people point to as to why not to trust me. I did unintentionally cheat on a speedrun that I officially submitted to the leaderboard. I did unintentionally cheat on a speedrun that I did submit. Okay. In 2020, and the speedrun mods were completely in the right for taking it down. I was using a disallowed mod for about a week on my live streams when a new version of Minecraft came out, and I was unaware that this mod existed. When I was defending myself, I didn't know that I'd been using the mod, and it's a really complicated and lengthy explanation of how it's oh. very reasonable that I didn't know that I had the mod, so I can't go into that here. A lot of people say that it's impossible that I wouldn't have known that I was so lucky, but those people don't realize that it was a little bit of luck over a very long period of time and not a lot of luck at once. It was actually only uncovered by a cheater themselves, who later got exposed for doing that same thing in the past. Yes, that's right, Mine Crevenger, the very same person that first publicly exposed Dream for cheating in his runs, has just been caught cheating himself. And not only cheating once, but cheating multiple world. Um, I'm not in the gaming bubble, even though I married a gamer. What is the sin? Is it how big of a sin is this? Can the gamers in the chat let me know? How big of a sin is it to cheat at the speed run? I assume it's as bad as cheating at anything, you know? So how bad is it though? Like, is it like, oh my, like for me, I'm feeling no, I, I got, I have no feelings towards this, right? So is this just like the worst possible thing or is this just like ah uh, everybody does it or it obviously i think it's, it sounds like it wasn't on purpose but like how big of a sin is this records over a span of more than two years i was defending myself so confidently publicly because me and a developer had already considered and ruled out oh you guys are saying big uh oh <laughs> speed runs are extremely precise fractions of a second so yeah oh damn close to cheating on your wife <laughs> oh man <laughs> Oh man, you guys are saying this is a big deal. Okay, some of you are saying it's not a big deal. Let's see. It's like cheating in a sport, it's illegal. Okay, okay, that's pretty fucked. Okay. Huh. The possibility that I could have been using a mod? Carl Jobs, a very well respected YouTuber that also investigates speedruns, made a video going into all the details. It's over an hour long. If you'd like to watch it to understand how that could happen and all the supporting evidence around it, you can. He is very critical of me in it, but here's his short conclusion that backs up what I'm saying. Okay, so Meg is saying it was huge because people thought it was intentional. But the situation is different because he clears up that it was unintentional. Okay, that makes sense. From after his thorough investigation. In conjunction with all of the evidence I've seen, I believe the essence of what Dream was claiming in his paste bin was probably true. In my opinion, it is definitely more likely that he really didn't know his drop rates and barter rates were modified. Was it intentional? And I do believe that it probably- That sucks for Dream though, right? Because correct me if I'm wrong, but that means he thought he was going, like he thought he was doing something amazing only to find out he didn't even earn it, right? That like that kind of sucks. Probably wasn't. He did a lot of research and interviewed a lot of people to come to that conclusion. He interviewed the mod team, me, developers, and a lot more. He even said something afterwards that applies to a lot of the situations we're gonna talk about today. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that clip too. In one breath, people will complain that Dream is a liar, and then in the mm. next, spout made up assumptions that couldn't be further from the truth. It seems like everyone is lying everywhere. I'm okay. still fully responsible for my behavior back then towards the moderators, regardless of my intentions. And I did act like a little baby and caused the majority of the problems myself. So I'm sorry. Regardless of if you believe me or if you think that I'm being dishonest, since this all happened over three years ago, a lot has changed since. And I've done my best to move forward and grow as a person. I did my best to make amends with the mods. I apologized privately and publicly for lashing out at them. I donated over $50,000 to the speedrun community through tournaments and personal donations to over 15 different speedrunners. I voluntarily took down all my speedrun times, even ones that had nothing at all to do with the mod or the cheating scandal. I also deleted my original response video and i haven't speedrun officially since it's been Damn. over three years now that that's out of the way I okay so i don't know about dream i'm i'm really going in blind right now he's is he like do you guys think and i know you're probably if your fans maybe are biased but like is, does he seem like a very good person or does he seem like a person with some flaws that make him sort of a bad person do you guys think that he's a good person who's just kind of naive like what kind of category is he in you know
I want to clear up some quick misinformation around it. One, it had nothing to do with my manhunt videos or any video or speedrun I have ever posted on my YouTube channel. It was specifically live streamed attempts that I did during a one week or so period over three years ago. It's a common misconception that the cheating had to do with my YouTube channel, manhunt, or any other videos I posted. <laughs> Two, I didn't hire a fake astrophysicist to defend me, which is also commonly said, knowing nothing about math, but fully believing what? in my innocence at the time. Given the accusation was purely based on math, I used a website for math freelancers and reached out directly to a highly qualified professor that said they'd be willing to help me. They even made one of their conditions before agreeing that no matter what their conclusion was, I had to publish their results, even if their conclusion was that I was guilty. I agreed to this. Dream briefly explained the situation, and the expert agreed to help. The ex oh, his name is Clay. Okay. You guys find him to be sincere? Just like uh, Kay says, he seems like a regular human with good intentions. Seems flawed, but tries to be good. Okay. He definitely wants to be good. Mm, okay, okay. Expert hmm. provided Dream with a few terms, one of them being that Dream post the results no matter the outcome. Obviously, the report ended up getting ripped to shreds, but I had no idea that would be the case. I knew absolutely nothing about math, and I fully believed in my innocence. So when a highly qualified third party was agreeing with me, it made me even more confident and bold. There was many factors as to why the report ended up being bad, partially due to the public pressure and it being rushed. Ah, Viola says he's a person that tries his best, but he grew up conservative, unlearned a lot of it, but no one will forgive him for being cringe as a kid. Well, <laughs> I also grew up conservative, so relatable dream. Partially due to them not knowing as much about Minecraft as the mod team did. But regardless, I didn't bribe or make up a fake astrophysicist, which is something people frequently say. The speed of the mod team <laughs> and many other parties independently verified their credentials and the fact that they exist. I also put way more information in the description on this, just for transparency's sake, including proof about the professor, all of my emails to them, and even screenshots of messages that I never provided in the past. I think that's really important to clear up because it's used very, very frequently to say, if he will go as far as to make up a fake astrophysicist to lie, how far will he go with other lies? And I would just like to point out that even though I didn't lie, lying about a Minecraft speedrun is very different than lying about very serious allegations. The next thing I'm going to talk about is a pretty big one that you might not have heard about, but it's a pretty important one. Manatreed. Now, if you don't know who Manatreed is, Manatreed is a content creator that I added to my server, the Dream SMP, a couple years ago. They were anonymous like me, and they had a very short career. There was a thread made about Manatreed saying that they doxxed him and that he was an IRL friend of mine, had been charged with domestic violence, and that I was trying to hide it. Manatreed was removed from the SMP by me, all of his accounts were deleted, and I made a statement talking about how I don't support domestic violence, mm. I wasn't aware of any domestic violence, and that due to how complicated the situation was, I decided to remove Manatreed from the SMP. I also strongly alluded to the fact that the doxxed information was incorrect. Everything I just said was true except for the fact that Manatreed was my childhood best friend. I came up with the name Manatreed, I made the accounts, I grew up with him, his grandparents were like my grandparents, he was like family to me. The criticism I get to this day related to this is that I intentionally housed and hid an abuser. Because Manatreed was faceless and anonymous like me, people said that it was planned deliberately in order to hide a domestic violence charge. This is not true. In late oh. 2020, he had a lot of problems. He was struggling with homelessness, had been in multiple recent car accidents. Mm. I knew I could help him, so I did. I offered him a place to stay, I paid for his groceries and gas for a while, and eventually, I came up with the idea to add him to my server. He was my childhood friend, I trusted him, and he wasn't a risk. I was anonymous, so obviously if I wanted to play games with him, his identity couldn't be known, or it would leak my identity. Whenever the thread first came out saying that Manatreed abused his girlfriend, I responded emotionally, calling people gullible, because I didn't believe that someone I had known for so long and grew up with could do anything like that. And at the mm. time, although no one knew, he lived with me in Sapnet, so it seemed crazy that he could somehow hide it from us. I jumped to the gun and reacted emotionally. <laughs> Only later did I properly look into everything, and I apologize. After I confronted Manatreed in real life, he claimed that he wasn't an abuser, that he had just had an altercation with another guy and that his ex-girlfriend got in the middle of it. He claimed that he never hit her, that he had just mm. caught her cheating and was fighting the guy that she was cheating with, that the cops got called, and that he got arrested. This is just what he said. This altercation would have taken place around a year before he moved in with us and I had no knowledge of it. People thought that domestic violence took place when he lived with us because my address was on a court document of his, but that was far after when he was on probation and had to tell the court where he currently lived. He also lied to us and told us that he was on probation for smoking weed in order to not have us question anything suspicious related to it. Even though he claimed to me that he wasn't abusive to anyone, I couldn't just take him for his word, and so I did research myself. I reached out to his ex-girlfriend and talked to her about it all. She wouldn't really say that much. She said to give Manatreed the best wishes for his future, and that his mistakes were behind her, and that she just mm. wanted to be left alone online. I don't want to push her for information, so because of that, I didn't feel comfortable having Manatreed on the Dream SMP anymore. I didn't have full confidence that he was being honest with me because he had already lied to me. And I was also still faceless and really didn't want to have to dox myself to explain the situation. Hmm. I decided the best idea would just be to remove him from the server. I had created all of the accounts. Okay, <clears throat> this is already a lot for me to like try to understand. And I will say as a content creator myself, it is really difficult when you try to get your friends involved in your work. And like, I definitely 
have had good times doing that and eventually to realize like that's not the best way to go about things. So I try to keep my friends and family outside of my work just because it gets way too complicated. And also the viewers think like if they know people you know, then they know you more than you know. Like they think you're they're closer to you. So like I can see how that gets complicated. Um, and I also don't want like I have very different friends than me and I think everyone's on a journey like I don't do guilty by association myself I do I, I pay attention to the individual's like relationship with the self so I have like my friends are different than me my siblings are different than me so I could see him wanting to stand up for his friend or slash see his friend through a journey also it sounds like his friend has a lot of issues you know what I mean so there's a big part of that that isn't dreams responsibility but like we might have people in our life right that are complicated, that aren't the greatest people, that are abusive. Like if you grew up with boomer parents, you were probably abused by them or had toxic relationships with them. It doesn't mean they're bad people. You know, it means that they had a life in which they tried to give you a better life or maybe they didn't that they thought was good. Most people don't do things because they think it's bad. Most people do things they because they think it's good, you know. And then, of course, you get complicated. You get into situations. They're not the best. I think we've all been toxic. I don't think anyone is a perfect person. And the question is, what are you dealing with on an individual basis? So if you've hit somebody, that's a very different relationship with the self and with those people than somebody who's never hit somebody. So, you know, if your friend does something that you think is immoral and morals are subjective, then you have to decide if you want a boundary for your own sake, but not because of what other people are doing, but because of how it impacts you, right? So I can see him needing to take space away from his friend, especially in relation to work, because that's a lot more complicated, right? Um, but I could also see you wanting to root for your friend to get better, even if they're complicated. Look, I always say with my inner circle, even if they did something horrific, I would turn them into the cops and still visit them in prison because I really believe in the uniqueness of a consciousness. I think you're all very, like all very unique, but none of you are special. Like everyone's just a person on a planet. I think we're evolved animals. I don't know what you believe. Maybe you believe in God. Maybe you believe in something else, but I believe we're animals. We're like biological creatures that have evolved. And then here we are in this ecosystem. So there, there's going to be huge flaws, right? And so I can see somebody wanting the best for someone they've known ever since they were a kid, right? That's like a big deal. So I think my heart goes out to anyone in this situation because I know it's so much more complicated than the internet thinks it is. So I completely shut them down and removed his access. That meant that there was absolutely no risk that even if he was lying, he would ever cause future harm because of me. Unfortunately, this wasn't a cut and dry situation. This was one of my childhood best friends that had always treated me with kindness and had lied to me in Sacknet. And unfortunately, mm. due to all of this, I have no contact with him. And Hey, man, happy Thanksgiving. Super thankful to have met you. Most reliable friend since childhood. And never straight away from me. I appreciate you more than you say I'm here, Clay. Happy Thanksgiving. I would never get this opportunity if it wasn't for you. Okay. Someone that was like family to me. I'll never know the exact truth behind everything. The person that I knew was kind, generous, and compassionate, and I never would have added him to the server if I thought he was anything otherwise. But what I do know is that other than my initial crude response, I stand by my actions. I think that I navigated a really complex situation the best that I could. I got rid of any risk, supported a victim, made it clear that I didn't support domestic violence, even to the detriment of one of my oldest friendships. I completely understand people that don't know my side of this situation, assuming that this makes me a liar and that it's obvious that I was covering up wrongdoing. I even had creators that thought this until they talked to me about it. It's not unreasonable at all, and that's why I figured I had to talk about it in this video, even if it is personal and uncomfortable. Before I jump into the most important things I'm going to address, I want to talk about something that's come up a lot due to these allegations and something that's commonly said to give credibility to me being a bad or weird person. I'm going to play a clip from Moist Critical who talked about the allegations pretty neutrally to his credit. Mm. But while talking about them, he said this. Dream's audience has always been on the younger side of things and yet Dream constantly engages with them in very inappropriate ways, such oh. as like posting thirst traps. He does post thirst traps, even knowing that his fans are children so can i see one of these thirst traps i don't know why i can't see it happening is dream posting thirst traps i mean my audience is older so i and i'm obviously a, a sex worker so like i post obviously my audience is mostly 18 plus between the ages of 20 and like 35 and so i'm used to having an older audience but what if dream wanted an older audience can he have that is he allowed to grow up 
You know what I mean? I got to see these thirst traps. Somebody like, okay, maybe I'll Google. Is he going to show one? Because like, I got to know. When these claims come out, I think a lot of people start to take them at face value because they're like, oh, that, that sounds like the dream that I know. Uh, you know, this sounds like something dream might do. So it's probably true. Even though right now, a lot of the evidence backing it up isn't the strongest. Now, before I talk about this, I just want to ask that if you're watching this and you share the same opinion, try and give me the benefit of doubt. Genuinely listen to what I have to say and okay. discard your <laughs> preconceived biases. Because yeah, if you think someone's creepy and then they're accused of being a creep, it clearly changes how you think. So I'm going to break okay. down multiple things that Charlie said because I respect him. I respect his opinion. Okay, you guys are saying he's going to show me. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think he's a super reasonable guy and I think he's an awesome uh, guy. I'm iffy about Penguin. Sometimes I like Charlie and most of the time I don't. I just think he's kind of too dumb for his own good. He's so simple as a human, which is probably why he is... <laughs> He's just so simple. He's such a simple man. And like sometimes I think he he just takes the most basic takes and never thinks about the complex part about being a person. Like what? Okay, so I'm like, I'm, sometimes I like Charlie and sometimes I don't. Content creator. One of the things that he said is that I post creepy pictures and thirst traps. He does post thirst traps. So that's the first thing I'm going to talk about. Uniquely, because I didn't reveal my face until last year, I can actually pretty reasonably show you every photo and video of myself that I've ever posted on the internet. So they're going to start scrolling by now in a completely random order. While you watch, it's important to note that what you post on something like Snapchat is very different than something you'd post on Instagram or Twitter. Snapchat runs ads every five or six photos and encourages you to post upwards of really? 100 photos or videos a day to have the most growth and make the most money. They only what? last 24 hours like an Instagram. Wait, I have a Snapchat, but I don't think about it that way. Is that what's happening on Snap? I've never seen an ad on Snapchat, but I, I almost never watch anybody's anything except my siblings, I guess. Instagram story. So on Snapchat, you kind of just spam anything. So for me, it's silly filters, my cat, okay. whatever food I'm eating that day, I get a uh -huh. haircut. Because of that, it's much easier to take one silly photo from Snapchat out of context and make it out to be something that it's not. On top okay. of that, there's a lot of fake accounts that I think people fall for all the time. They post thirst trap captions using my photos. And with how many likes they get, there's a lot of people. I turn lesbians back to normal. <laughs> Looks like a lesbian. <laughs> I turn lesbians back to normal. Not, not with that aesthetic. That's a lesbian right there. That's a lesbian with a beard, bro. People that casually scroll Twitter what? and think their posts are mine. There's one specific one that was extremely popular and verified before it was suspended. It posted tweets like this and this. Wait, wait. <laughs> what? Verified before it was suspended. It posted tweets like this. M name a man prettier than me. You can't. <laughs> and this and racism i'm 6'2 by the way wait that's funny <laughs> these cannot be the thirst traps charlie is talking about these <laughs> this is so dumb and it's kind of funny though just found out about racism so messed up <laughs> This is too, this can, this isn't what Charlie's talking about. This is too funny, bro. It's so dumb. These are just completely normal photos I posted of myself with no caption, but they re- Hey, let this man feel himself, bro. Let this formerly fat man feel himself, bro. Let this formerly neckbeard man feel himself, bro. No, these are the thirst traps, y'all. Let this man feel himself, bro. Can you imagine being that nerd? Listen, as somebody, Abba and Preach have this great video about this. How like all we all used to be ugly. Bro, I was so much uglier when I was younger. I get cuter every day, bro. I know with this lighting, you can't tell, but I'm cuter every day I age and I'm in my mid thirties. I'm just saying, let this man age. Let this man come into himself. Let this man feel himself. Damn, damn. Post them and put a weird caption. This has fooled tons of people, including people that have made pretty big videos about me. And I wouldn't be surprised at all if- Yo, if, yo let this man grow up. Charlie saw this account a couple times and thought its tweets were mine. <laughs> a lot of people also say stuff like this. I don't know why he still uses Snapchat. It's still kind of weird. I told you, if you're a grown man using Snapchat. Okay, literally, Snapchat's just like another way to talk to your friends and like post shit. I don't share my Snapchat anymore. Like, I don't add any new people to it. But I used to just, like, give it as a perk for Patreon. Then I got too, like, annoying. And so I don't have that anymore. But, like, I still just, like, post pictures of my cat and food and, like, I don't know, send videos to my siblings and send filtered videos of myself, like, making stupid faces to people. I don't know. It feels – isn't Snapchat just, like, Instagram but Snap? 
which I think is super reasonable to think. If you don't know that there's creator accounts now that work very differently to normal Snapchat accounts, you can promote stuff to millions of people through Snapchat's algorithm. And even- Yo, maybe I should get on the Snapchat game. Should I actually become a creator on Snap? I didn't even think about it. As of recently, you can make a lot of money. Obviously, encourage you <gasps> to post- Snap paid 12,000 creators more than 250 million? Bro. Just whatever random stupid photo you took. I mean, I hardly even log into my Snapchat myself and even have someone else completely run the account because there's a manager account feature where I can just post from my personal snap and never even see any of the messages. I also sometimes have people say that I'm weird because of fan art account likes from my fan art account. So I just want to clarify, mm. I'm not the one behind 99% of the likes. I've never made that public because it is beneficial for artists for people to think that it's me every time. But again, when it's being used against me to say I'm creepy, I have to clarify. Hi, so I've ran Dream's public Snapchat since January 2022. There's nothing weird and he doesn't really even log into it. Um, I also run his fan art account and have been since January 2022 as well. I'm good friends with Dream and the Dream team, so he thought I'd be a good pick to run it. I mostly just like and retweet art. I'm banished from replying. Sometimes people will call him creepy for stupid stuff that I've liked and I've never really taken it seriously because I- just See, this is why I wouldn't want a young audience. Like the older audience can be difficult sometimes, but I'm gonna switch my fibromyalgia up. Hold on, oh my God, my legs today. But I will say like having a younger audience is so complicated. It does come with a lot of viewers and money, but it also comes with like so much more responsibility. Like I used to have a much younger audience when I was much younger and now my audience has aged with me, thank God. So like I prefer that, you know, I prefer an older audience, but I wonder if if these guys will ever feel like it's time to not have a young audience, which is difficult because they're playing games that probably attract a younger audience like Minecraft. So it's difficult, but yeah, it sounds like a headache to have a young audience, honestly, no offense. Just think what's being depicted in the art is funny to me, like the enough kissing art or something because I'm their friend and it makes me laugh. It just happens to be really good art. But when it's being- uh, Hold on, hold on, Little Witch, good point. Says it's not his fans though, it's people who hate him. Uh, that's, that's a good point, but I do wonder if it's be his haters tend to be younger. Is that the problem? Because my haters tend to be older, but they're not they are not doing the same things to me that like these kids are doing to him in the same way. I guess they're not doing exactly like worse or better things. I don't know. OK, that's a good point. It is his haters, I guess, ultimately. I guess his fans wouldn't be doing it. OK, that's a good point. OK, mm, interesting. Interesting. He used to say that dream is creepy or weird. I feel really bad because he's definitely not. There's been times that he's messaged me and told me to unlike something or asked why I was on a DNF liking spree. And he's definitely a silly guy, but people shouldn't use Haley says, should we hold creators responsible for the age of those that follow them? Well, I don't think you need to be held responsible for the age of your audience, but I think you as a brand, come on. I purposely, I purposely brand myself for older people like I think about getting people in their 30s I think about appealing to people at least over 20 I try thinking about how not to get younger people um so I personally do that because I want older people in my audience obviously I want that older philosophy conversation my patreon's 18 plus everything's 18 plus that I do um because I want it to be adults like I just don't want kids in my audience but you know, kids have a place on the internet as they deserve to have a place on the internet. And so I, I th it's not that you hold content creators responsible for having young audiences. It's that you, as the content creator, I think have a lot more power in choosing your audience than you think you do. You know? Use me liking art that I found funny or just thought was- Yeah, he's 23. So he's still pretty young. To be fair, my audience grew with me. So I think by the time I turned like 28 or 30 i finally started not having a lot of underage people yeah impressive artistically against <clears> him <throat> i can still be more careful about what's liked on the account though and i also can reclarify my boundaries which i do at the end of this a lot week. of gay art in this which we love to see is he queer or is he just straight is he queer yeah but i will just say here that i have never supported not safe for work art of minors or from minors. I think that that's weird and gross. Yeah, I think fan fiction is weird. All stuff is weird. I clarify my boundaries on myself later in the video. Or not, yeah, fan fiction. Is that what it's called? Realism, like when you do fan fiction with like YouTubers, weird. But generally it's just, I don't want anything weird drawn of me. I also later have the person who used to run the account back in 2020 say something as well. But yeah, like one out of every 1,000 Snapchats I post, people end up spreading and making fun of, which is fine, of course, but it's when it's made out to be weird that it's disingenuous. Now that's not to say that I'm posting the exact same thing as everyone else or that what I'm posting isn't different than other people. It definitely is. I was faceless for a very long time, never took pictures of myself. Okay, you guys are saying, I'm seeing some that he's straight. Oh no, some that he's queer. So he's straight, he's queer. 
but not chosen a label. Okay, based. Okay, I'm liking Dream more and more. Not that I don't mind the straights, but like we're a queer channel here. I'm a queer person. So like we're all about that. We like that energy. So un unlabeled, but queer. Okay, okay. And had no social media before YouTube. So you're seeing literally my first time ever taking pictures and I am just a little goofy. Again, it's fine to make fun of. Like some of these pictures are stupid, but using them as evidence <laughs> that I'm weird or making them out to be weird just isn't fair. I don't really take myself seriously. I don't think I'm super attractive. I don't think I'm super funny. I think a lot of people misunderstand some of the things that I post that are satire. A lot of my videos before I did Minecraft challenges were satire videos and I still post a lot of satire. A perfect example of this is my unface reveal. I posted a video on my channel where I unrevealed my face. It's a satire video. I have my two best friends burst down my door. Tell me that- Is that George? Is that jo Is that George? I can't tell. That I'm ugly and to put my mask back. No. On. Yes. No? I'm face blind. Is that George? On, which I agree with, make a professional mask, and then go through the McDonald's drive through with it on, while saying that I'm never taking it off ever again. The number of people that took this seriously was in the tens of millions. People see the headline, assume that sounds like something that cringe- Oh, I saw that headline. I did see that. ...you guy would do, and then it's history. And the same thing happens with my TikToks. Like, almost my entire TikTok page is sarcastic. Okay, it is George. But every now and then, someone will take a TikTok of mine completely seriously. Like, I posted a video of me with a chat filter on and said no filter, right after the face reveal. I made a TikTok where I take off the mask and use an ugly filter. Another TikTok. Oh, George and Dream live together. Did George say that in his video? See, I, I can't remember all these facts. Okay. Okay. TikTok where I make fun of the face leak photo or many other sarcastic posts. But then I post a TikTok where I'm in a Walmart wearing my mask and people take it so seriously. I get tons of hate and it said mm -hmm. how cringe it is that I would go shopping in my mask, that it's pathetic that I'm trying to hide my face after I already revealed it. Or I post a TikTok where I sing one of my songs, say no... He sings too. God, I know nothing about Dream. He sings? Auto-tune and then kiss the camera. And it's that I'm trying to be hot or think I'm such an amazing singer instead of that I'm self-aware and playing into the cringe. I didn't watch that and go, ah, you are so cool. You are such an amazing singer and you're also... Okay, I'm not going to lie. As somebody who's like going to be 35 in May, I don't care what somebody in their early 20s is doing because like you're just figuring out your stuff. If he's neurodivergent, which I think he is, technically there's a lot of like conversation around people maturing even or uh, developing a little like um, slower, I guess is the word to use. Like he's not even 26. Like there's so many things in his own development journey that hasn't even occurred yet. Like he's so young. So I just want to say like as an older person, I think I'm, this seems all pretty normal. I mean, I was cringe as fuck with my friends in my early 20s. So like I'm not seeing anything that's a red flag. Uh, I think playing into the cringe is probably funny and like probably good. Yeah, he's ADHD. We love a neurodivergent queen. Okay, so like he's neurodivergent, he's queer. We love everything about Dream right now. Hot. Like, it's not serious. Yes, I do post cringy stuff sometimes, and I'm not trying to say that I've never been cringy or that you can't make fun of content that is intentionally cringy, but I've never posted anything that you could remotely say is a thirst trap or inappropriate for my audience. Because as you can see, in the context of all these other photos I've posted, it's not honest to single out one weird Snapchat out of context of the thousands I spam oh and God. then say that I post creepy photos. But yeah, like one photo I posted was heavily spread as a thirst trap by parody accounts, and it's this. I'm supposed to be dead. It's definitely not a thirst trap, but it's not like I was sending it to somebody and being weird. I was just spamming photos on my public story. Oh no, George not found is giving him the Schlopperson. Oh no, oh no. Like, yeah, it's goofy. It was not a thirst trap. I posted one or two. How did Charlie miss so hard, bro? I don't like Charlie, bro. I'm sorry. I don't mean to say that because I go hard on Charlie sometimes. But like, how could Penguin call these like real thirst traps? And I just, what's happening? What's going on? Photos with my shirt off ever. And this one's because I thought it was cool to see my hair comb back since it's always forward. And you can't even see me or my body. There's also this monstrosity that's frequently shared. Like, this is a gross photo. I look terrible. This is not a thirst- That is a gross photo. If that's a thirst trap, you failed, bro. It's just like a goofy, uh, like, I don't understand the tongue outside the mouth thing. You do, you. Aims with the super chat. Let's go. Says, like the stream, you animals. It's free. Thank you, guys. Support me. I'm chronically ill and gay. <laughs> Okay, we love we love the queers here. Um, yeah, I just feel like he's being goofy and probably feeling himself. And like, look, when you go from, you know, feeling ugly to feeling cute, you just want to be cute, you know? First trap, this is a terrible photo. This is just disgusting. I was just spamming photos, didn't think much of it, and posted it. And now it will haunt me until the end of- 
<laughs> Ingrid says most critical does even worse research than h 3 s crew, bro. Shout out Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Olivia, bro. Oh, that sucks. Time. I'm cringy <laughs> and being serious when I make satire posts. I'm full of myself when I post a normal photo. I'm gross. I cannot I believe he even dedicated more than two seconds to this, bro. Who cares? Let the boy be cringe. Post a bad photo. I'm weird when I post a silly photo. It's just people assuming the worst or just not knowing who I am, which I guess is fair. So yeah, that's what I have to say about the thirst traps thing. But obviously that's just photos. Now in terms of other stuff, I've definitely had my opinions morph over time, especially since I've face revealed and actually got to meet fans in person. But we can still talk about some old stuff that people frequently use to say that I'm weird. First of all, me calling my fan base kittens. Now, this was a stupid tweet. If I could go back, never would have tweeted it. I completely understand that without knowing my intentions or what I actually meant, it could seem super weird. The whole Discord kittens meme wasn't as big yet, and I just tweet so much, I just wasn't really thinking. It came out horribly, and I will never live this down. It is still something that my friends make fun of me for to this day. I was just trying to explain that when I say I love my audience, I don't mean in the same way that I love my friends or my family, that I mean it in the way that I love dogs, even though I don't know every dog personally. I can still say i love dogs i should not have said kittens but it's not what i meant it was a stupid tweet um people use this to go on me, 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 me. i i love you guys bro i love you bros i love these letters on a screen that represent some sort of consciousness i'll never probably meet or talk to or see i love you bros but i don't love you you know what i'm saying but i love you like every rock and tree and creature okay but i don't love you like that but i love you Okay, bros, I love you, but I don't love you like that, but I love you. You know what I'm saying? I love you like a mom loves her kids, you know? Tweet. I've tweeted tens of thousands of times the last few years. It wasn't my brightest moment, but it also wasn't me trying to be weird or going kittens. It was just an analogy that I regret using. Another point of evidence towards the dream is weird narrative was me, quote unquote, selling my baby pictures. In 2022, my merch company sold a flash drive that was dream themed. It was going to be sold empty. And then my mom and my dad, who helped run my merch company, had the idea to put some random stuff onto the drive. So it felt more unique. I thought it was a cool idea. Okay, the content cool. on the drive wasn't what was being sold. It was the slap wristband flash drive itself. We added some drafts of books I wrote from when I was a teenager, some memes, some old Minecraft screenshots of me and my friends, some okay. notes and emails from teachers talking about me being rebellious in middle school. <laughs> and yes, two pictures hmm. of me from when I was a baby. The intent was wasn't at all to sell pictures of me when I was a baby, which other celebrities have actually literally done. The intent was- uh, Remember that girl on OF who posted an OF photo of her? And it was like when she was a kid, bro, how do people fucking not think these things through, bro? Just to show a little bit of where I'm from, like you would show pictures in a biography you would sell or something. It was my version of a little biography with right. It's so weird when you get your parents involved and it like you think it's so cute and you're like, oh, this is so innocent. You know what I mean? And like, this is so special and like, Oh my gosh, you know what I mean? And then people are just like, why did you, like, what did you do this? Is this, are these the photos? I don't know. Look, <sighs> the, okay, this is interesting. We had a discussion about this on my channel because I, on my Instagram, I kind of post like, kind of like schmexy, but also like regular photos. And one of you in chat were saying like, it's kind of weird when you have like sexy photos and then a random kid photo of yourself. And I was like, why is that weird? And then I was like, oh, I see it. I get why it's weird. So I stopped posting like old photos of myself as a kid because I was like, oh, because I forget I'm so sex positive. I'm so neutral to nudity. I just think it's like whatever that I forget like other people are seeing like sexy, sexy, sexy and then kid photo and they're not thinking about like it's just my life. So I stopped posting that because I was like, oh, I don't want the creeps on the internet to look at my old baby photos and be weird about it, you know? But I could see if you have a kid audience and you don't do 18 plus stuff and you're not the guy who does like sexy photographs or something, I could see you sharing your baby photos because then it's like cute and wholesome. And I still share my baby photos with like my Discord and stuff because I'm like, look how cute I was. <laughs> what a vibe. But obviously, I understand, you know, there's like a different context. You know what I mean? It's like a different context. You know, writing and pictures and quotes. I think there's definitely something to be said about the concept of being in possession of a file of someone else's baby picture versus it just being in a physical book. So mm. I totally get it. But you have to recognize that that's clearly not the intention. It should be something funny or cringe to make fun of and not be a serious thing like being about pedophilia. But yeah, I mean, as you can probably tell by the pictures going by, I have a pretty normal life. I think I'm a pretty average guy and 99%. I hate to tell you this, most streamers are just the most boring, normal people. You know, 
like we really are, especially like, I mean, me especially, but like, yep, it's just normal, boring life. You eat food, you go home, you watch anime, you stream, just regular life of the things I post online are extremely normal. Despite how much I've put myself out there, there's only a few weird out of context things to show for it and a couple goofy photos. So yeah, I think when people say that I post thirst traps or post predatory things to my audience, they're just misinformed. I don't think that Charlie is being malicious at all. It's just a- Alex says how exhausting to have your whole life under a microscope examined by children whose brains aren't fully booted yet. It's not even worse, it's worse than that, it's Charlie. He's talking about Charlie, he's talking about a YouTuber. That's even worse, that's what I'm saying, Charlie might- Again, with peace and love and no disrespect, I think Charlie might just be dumb. Like, and I don't mean that in a bad way. A lot of people are dumb. I'm dumb. Everyone's dumb. Okay, we're all idiots. But like something about Charlie is so like, sometimes it's just brain dead. You know what I mean? And I'm like, why would you say that out loud? And I just don't know if he understands what he's saying. But at the same time, like, eh, what are you going to do? Like, eh, this is his opinion, you know? A lot of misinformation. And it's something I've never really made an effort to clear up. I always lean into the cringe. But when it's being used to strengthen serious allegations, that's when I kind of have to really break down how I am. But yeah. Obviously. Nia says, do you think the world is overcorrecting itself? I think the world goes in waves. So I think we're living history. So you and me, we're alive right now. And we are history. So, you know, history only remembers the victors. Oh, history is written by the winners. Oh, history, history, history. We are living history. I'm living in Europe in a town where there's like Roman ruins. Like I am living in a land that is just living history, but we ourselves are living history. So I don't think the world is overcorrecting itself. I think the world goes in waves and we repeat cycles because history doesn't repeat itself. Humans do. So humans have a tendency to repeat toxic cycles, repeat cycles that they were born into. We're all born into cultures, bubbles, backgrounds, and we tend to learn our environment and repeat our environment. It's not even like that big. It's up. It's like a bummer, but it's also like just how humans are. So humans are going to human, right? So I think like it's not that society is overcorrecting. It's that society goes in cycles. You know how the conservatives are the anti-culture right now? And it's because they go in cycles. When I was a kid, conservatives were in charge of everything in America. Like you couldn't even say you were gay. Now it feels like it's overcorrecting to the point where, you know, conservatives feel like the rebels of society. And so they are like, oh, we're we're the anti-culture. And then it will swing back around and then we'll swing back around and we'll swing. And so that's why I say if you're going to live your life based off what society is doing and what the trends are, that's a decision you can make. But I don't, you know, you do you, right? But like... I can't live my life that way because I know it's just going to go in cycles. You can almost predict your life if you can just look at the way that humans tend to repeat cycles. And I'm just like, I'm, you know what I mean? You could do you. You could do you. I mean, on top of all that, my audience is not as young as people think. This isn't a hill I'm going to die on because I know oh. a lot of people have their minds made up or could not be convinced. Believe it or not, I have one of the oldest audiences in all of Minecraft YouTube. I oh. started YouTube through coding and extreme. Yeah, well, I have the most girls in the streaming community, commentary community. Guys, can we please, girls, subscribe. 30% of you are watching me and don't subscribe. And look, we want the boys in the audience too. We want the they, thems. We want the everybody's here. But like literally, I've got like, you know, 70% uh identified female here and we just like to make that 90 percent so you guys subscribe to the channel it really does help thank you so much extremely complex stuff like reverse engineering pewdiepie's minecraft seed my videos even Love to Felix. this day are super long don't have that quick <clears throat> retention style editing or sound effects or anything that a lot of channels do and i also have a large pro gamer audience because my videos involve a lot of technical skill my audience outside of youtube is younger but the vast majority of people i get recognized by wait 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 uh, huh, I guess, says Charlie has said before, way before this, that he thinks Dream is egocentric. Really? So he's already had an opinion about him. Is he? You know, you know what I mean? Is he? Is Dream? I don't know, Dream. Is he egocentric? Oh, I love analytics. Okay. <clears throat> oh, oh, interesting. <gasps> Dream has 75% boys? Why did I think Dream's audience was going to be girls? Oh, interesting. Okay. So Dream's audience, guys, I love analytics. Female, 23%. Males, 75%. Non-user specified, 0.1. 13 to 17 years, 11%. And 18 to 24, 41%. <gasps> Whoa. My 13 to 17 is like 0.1%. If anything, sometimes it's zero. But most of my audience is in that like uh, kind of 24 to 34 range. I think 25 to 34 is the most. 
Um, oh, interesting. Oh, wait, chat's saying he's cocky, but he's not egotistical. I mean, gosh, to be a streamer, you got to think you're like worth watching. You know, that's the problem. I mean, I would, I would say you all got like we all have to be slightly full of ourselves to think we're worth watching on a stream. You know what I mean? I cannot believe that's so his analytics are so much more interesting than I thought they would be. You know, Kelsey says it's Kelsey's says it's girls outside his YouTube for sure. Mm. Why did you think he would have more girls? <sighs> I kind of thought his energy was really inviting to women, but I don't watch him. So maybe I just thought his aesthetic. Um, two, I also thought George's audience would be more girls. But now I'm wondering if I'm wrong on that, too. Is is his audience more boys as well? Because I also thought George and then the fan art that he was getting, I also thought was more girl. It looked like girl vibes. So then I was like, oh, it's girls. But now I'm wondering if it's boys. Are they gay boys? Like, are they feminine? It just feels very feminine. The energy feels very femme, which I love to see. Maybe it's just a bunch of boys that are in their feminine, which we love. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I just thought I don't know why I thought that. You know, on the street are college aged and usually dudes being like, what the f it's dream on Twitch. I've covered heavy topics in this video. I'm covering heavy topics. Me and my friends all swear on every other platform. And we're Wait, why do you guys keep saying his audience is outside of YouTube? Where else does dream uh, exist? Is he on Twitch or something? You know, or like, where does he exist? You uh, Instagram or TikTok? What is it? definitely not kids channels in any way just because i post minecraft videos doesn't mean that my audience is just little kids most people that watch me either used to play minecraft or don't even play minecraft at all mm. i think charlie's audience is of course much older than mine but if i posted photos like these which to be clear if i okay first of all we love a man in an apron but yeah charlie's charlie's a thirst trapper I was ripped as hell like Charlie, I would 100%. Yeah, as he should. It would be made out to be predatory because it's me when it's not at all. And that same standard isn't applied to TikTok stars or really anyone else but me just because I'm the Minecraft guy. A lot of the folks. Yeah, why is that because he is the Minecraft guy? That's an interesting double-edged sword. But, but you know, he's going to be able to do it. Like, he's got to be allowed to do it. Eventually, you're allowed to, like, age, you know? Photos me and Charlie have posted are actually really similar. It's just people cherry picking goofy photos of mine and then making them out to be weird. When it's just me posting random photos, mm. because that's literally part of our job. But yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Weird. Now to move on and talk about some really important stuff. I'm going to be real, guys. We're 23 minutes into this, and I am very disappointed that the internet is bothering me with this. This is obviously not an issue so far. I can't, I mean, I'm honored and I love to see over 400 of you here right now. That's so nice. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the bubble. But like at the same time, this has been a not like nothing here. I'm not seeing any red flags yet. I expect to see some red flags. I expect to be very upset with Dream at some point in this video. Or I just spent an hour and 22 minutes of my life realizing that he seems perfectly decent. <laughs> what is happening? Over the last year and a half, there's been a bunch of really serious allegations made against me. Some of them were quickly disproved. Others admitted they were lying. But there's still some that I'm going to address in this video. The first allegation made against me was pretty quickly discarded. It was an allegation of flirting and had some inconsistencies. I'm still taking it seriously, though, and don't want to overlook anything. So I'm going to talk about it now. The first ever allegations against me that were spread pretty far were made the day after my face reveal on October 3rd, 2022. A girl named Anastasia tweeted out, he's only face revealing because he's scared that I'll do it first. And then she followed it up by tweeting, I'm too tired slash real life struggling to get involved, but the YouTuber trending right now already face revealed to me years ago when he was flirting with me when I was a minor. Obviously, because of my face reveal, it took off, pointing out inconsistencies, asking questions, and so on. I didn't have any inappropriate contact with this person. I didn't have any sexual contact with this person. I hardly even remember who this person is at all. And the only messages I could even find with this person were friendly Twitter DMs. And even in those Twitter DMs, I mentioned that they had eight. So last year, JKJK, how old are you? Never mind, 18. You still in school? Yeah, unfortunately sucks to suck teen in their bio which they contradict i definitely didn't face reveal to them that's an obvious lie almost nobody knew what i looked like at all before my face reveal not even most of my best friends that had known me my entire life let alone someone i don't even remember talking to at all she posted a screenshot of some texts and claimed that they were from me she showed a screenshot of my tiktok being from your contacts to try and prove that the texts were from me which people quickly pointed out is impossible because i have a google voice number hooked up to my tiktok which... <laughs> stupid i'm sorry scammers and people who do this like obviously they're meant okay sorry Mature Britney coming out. 
obviously, like, I do think mental illness plays a role in people making false accusations, okay? I really do think if you're a stalker, if you're creating false, if you're going through this much trouble, I do think it's an issue of mental health. You know what I mean? So I, I do think that plays a huge role. And when I say mental health, this is a philosophy channel. Like I don't do, I'm not a psychologist or something. I'm not a therapist, right? I'm not a mental health channel. I'm just, I comment on like pop culture and philosophy. And obviously if you're willing to work this hard creating fake things and you know what I mean? Like there's something going on. Because well-adjusted people, even people that have some trauma, like we're busy doing other things. We just don't have time to do this. I really recommend not lying. I know it's hard. I know there are a lot of survival situations where lying makes a lot of sense. But if you're in a living situation, don't lie. Just tell people to mind their business, okay? Let's keep going isn't i message like the text and again she never claimed any sexual misconduct she never claimed anything related to nudity or sexting this was also in early 2020 and she had 18 in her bio with everything and all the inconsistencies wasn't taken that seriously but it's still worth noting because people still somehow say this is one of three victims of mine so yeah before talking about the next allegation i just want to address something that i think is pretty important i see some people say why respond to fans at all or that it doesn't matter what dream said the fact that he responded to a fan is creepy and people saying that are kind of weird the dream would just respond to someone in dms that is not verified nor is a youtuber just a fan like that's a difficult part for me to get how stupid must you be to deep in your fans yeah um that that could be a point maybe maybe i don't know i obviously it's different my audience is older but even when i was younger like you don't think of yourself okay this is gonna sound crazy because george said something to this effect but this is gonna sound insane Unless you are truly like Andrew Tate brained, who I think is a piece of shit, you don't think you're that cool. You just think you're a normal person who has a job and it just happens to be on YouTube. And so you never think of yourself as like very popular or a YouTuber or like people that are famous. Like you don't think of yourself that way. So like when I get Instagram posts or sometimes you guys will DM me on Instagram and I usually don't respond to my Instagram DMs, but if one of you send me a link for a video, I'll be like, oh, cool, thanks for the link, bro. Or if somebody sends me something that's directly in relation to like something I'm, you know what I mean? Like, okay, that's cool, thanks, bro. Like, it's just, you're just responding if you have the time and the effort. You're not obligated to, I don't respond to every message, but sometimes I'll respond to a message. And it's just like, it's kind of like strange, I think to demonize it, but I could also understand if I was working with a much younger audience, maybe I'd be nervous that they were underage. And I do think a lot of boys, especially boys that are chronically online or boys that struggle struggle socially, which I think we can all agree without a doubt, he definitely has struggled socially and he's coming into his cute. And so he's coming into his fame and there's going to be like a little bit of a difficulty navigating that. I think they will make mistakes and I think we have to allow for mistakes to occur as long as it's not maliciously intended and so I, I don't think it's like black and white right don't message a fan it's like well don't you don't want to be with a fan but some people are just viewers like some people are just viewers like especially in an adult audience some people are fans and some people are just people who watch you not everybody who watches you is like a fan you know what I mean some people are just people you know, they just like see you on the internet. They're like, oh, hey, I saw your work. I really liked it. It's like some in some circles, especially in adulthood, you're not going to freak out that you're meeting like your favorite author because you're not like a fan. You're just thinking about their work as like a peer. So I think that's something that people forget. You know how many times I've met famous people and in my brain, I'm like, hey, I really liked your thing on this and this and this, but I'm not thinking about them as a content creator or as an author or as a person. I'm thinking about their work. But I think people who have parasocial relationships with people, they're the fans. If you have a parasocial relationship where like you're thinking like, you know what I mean? There's a there's a difference. I'm just I'm sorry not to be nitpicky about this. This is minor divergency, but like it's a different category. It's just like a different category, right? So like I'm a fan of people's work. Um, Like I was thinking about who my favorite content creator is right now. OK, so like my favorite person who makes content is Ray William Johnson on TikTok right now because my husband and I watch his TikToks every night before bed. But if you ask me who's my favorite creator, it's not Ray William Johnson because I don't watch Ray William Johnson's videos for him. I watch it for his stories. When I watch content creators on stream or on podcasts, I'm watching for them. I want to hear their opinion on things. So when I watch a certain pot, like when I watch Dr. K, I want to know what Dr. K thinks. 
I'm not just watching it for the content he's making. Does that kind of make sense? So that relationship distinction is going to be the decider in how you approach people. I know when people talk to me, not all the time, but I usually can tell how, like, okay, one time I was at VidCon and a girl screamed on the top of her lungs when she saw me and ran towards me, interrupted like the other things that were going on and everyone stopped and looked, you know? She runs towards me and gives me a hug. It was so sweet. Shout out, so sweet. But I'm not gonna think, oh, you know who's a really good person to make friends with? The person that just treated me like a fan, like a fangirl. You know what I mean? So I know, as a, especially as I age, the people that treat you a certain way, you gotta put them in categories, my friends. Because it's not bad that they're treating you that way. That's like, that's just the relationship they're having with your work. That's really great. No problem. But that's not the person you want to date. Because that person isn't going to be with you as a consciousness. They're going to be with the YouTuber. Do you get what I'm saying? So again, people in bands have dated their fans for many years or slept with their fans. They're called groupies. It's not the healthiest lifestyle, but people want to do it. So, you know, I don't think, anyway, all of this to say, what a fucking monologue. All of this to say, I don't think it's black and white in terms of interacting with your fans. I think what's in important is how. How you interact with your fans. That are missing a little bit of nuance. First of all, back when I started YouTube in 2019, obviously I had a very small community. Even moving into mid-2020 before the Dream SP. It's very common that when you have a smaller community, you're trying to grow your community. And part of how you do that is by interacting with people and responding and being active. Mm -hmm. I've always been pretty active in my community. And when I was really small, I used to respond to just about literally everyone that yeah that's really me, normal even if it was just one word answers obviously later on and as i grew i replied less and less and things evolved over time with my fan base growth like as an example when i started my public snapchat in 2019 i ran the account but in early 2020 because i was growing i completely passed the reins off to someone else and mm -hmm. pretty much never logged into it ever again hi i would like to remain anonymous so i'm just going to be calling myself rebecca uh, I used to run Dream Snapchat starting in 2020. I did that for probably around the year, and I would like. To <gasps> Nep says. I also I feel like you blew up quick too. I think he got like nine million in nine months. Whoa! Are you for real? For real? I really know nothing about Dream. So he got popular during the pandemic. You guys, your comments are really. I'm reading them. So. He got popular during the pandemic and then he blew up that quick. How do you get 9 million subscribers in nine months? Whoa. Sign says his speech pattern is so similar to George. I think they're both neurodivergent. I think that's probably why, right? I think a lot of streamers are neurodivergent. Like I'm never, I'm never shocked at that, right? Wow. That must be insane. That must be, that must have been that must have been really intense to handle. I wonder, wow. Ooh, I couldn't even imagine. That must have been overwhelming. Wow. Read through all the messages and I'd screenshot art or funny comments and I would respond that was appropriate. Uh, there is definitely nothing weird going on in this account. Dream hardly even logged into it and it was mainly me. He never used it inappropriately, and although I no longer work for Dream, I am not aware of him ever acting inappropriate with fans or anyone underage. Most, if not all, of the Snapchats I've posted since then have been through the manager account feature, meaning I use my normal Snapchat and post to my other account like a story, without even ever logging in or seeing any messages. Yeah. I think that when people talk about messaging or becoming friends with a fan, most people are thinking of a stan or a super obsessive fan. True. Because what makes you a fan? Having watched one video, two videos, ten, being subscribed? There's levels to it. My point being that when you're talking about messaging someone and it being weird, there has to be a weird dynamic. Obviously, a streamer that's subscribed to me and has watched my videos in the past and DMs me should not be looked at the same as a random mm. person that does the exact same thing. I've had fans of mine turn into friends of mine, but I don't go seeking out friendships with people who have obsessions with me. There's a difference between a fan of mine who reacts to my videos because they're entertaining and makes some content about me because that's what gets views that I end up becoming True. friends with, than a random stan that posts thirst edits of me. Obviously a massive difference. There's a difference True. between a random stan in your Twitch chat that watches every- Ooh, he's categorizing very, you guys know I like categorization. He's categorizing very good right now. Very true, absolutely. Absolutely. This is this is very different. All of these are completely different experiences. Every stream because they love you and a regular viewer that's in your community because they have common interests with you that you end up becoming friends with. And at that point, they're no longer a fan. They're a friend. And in some cases, becoming some of the most beloved couples on the internet. My point True. You guys know I knew I knew I would meet my husband or wife because they would 
see my videos. I knew I would meet my partner because they would see my videos and be like, oh, I kind of like her. And that's what happened. They were never like a fan, but they came across my content and right away were like, huh, I kind of like the way this girl talks. I think I get her. And they do. Gets me very well. You know, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's really normal. But then I've had very hard lines put in the sand with people that are inappropriate, that do cross boundaries, that are like, they feel entitled to you. You know, they feel like, hey, like, why don't you like me? And like, I, you know, I subscribe to your Patreon. Shouldn't you want to be with, you know what I mean? Like all of that stuff. Like, obviously there's the weirdos, you know, like everyone has a stalker at one point in their YouTube career, you know, but point is that there's a lot of nuance. I think it's a responsibility of a creator to be able to recognize dynamics, avoid any. And you will learn the hard way. You will learn the hard way. Which fans are the ones that are like mm, a little too parasocially and which ones are the ones who are more level headed? Weird ones. You can't just look at the fact that somebody follows you or has watched a couple of your videos and write them off as, oh, they're a fan. Therefore, right. we can have no conversation. I yeah. was also fans of a lot of my friends before I became friends with them. A lot of people that I ended up hiring as editors or artists or really anything are fans. And then, of course, you can become friends. Again, the whole point is that there's a lot of specifics to it. You can't just write somebody off completely. But again, right. that's fans. That's not stands. Otherwise, moving back to the next video. Very important thing. Now, the second allegation is what I'm going to talk about in extreme detail. Second allegation came out. I mean, even with friendships, guys, even with friendships, like I remember um, when Abba and I became friends, like I remember I was making videos during COVID and uh, I was just like a small little content creator, no big deal. And he like gave me a shout out and I was like, oh, that's so nice. And then uh, it took a while longer for us to finally reach out to one another and then for us to collab and then become friends. And even with that, it takes a while because even content creator to content creator, there are some content creators who will remain nameless. You know who I'm talking about, who will be obsessed with you and like want to be in your space. And like, even though they have a big following themselves, they they will like obsess over being with the bigger content creators. You know what I mean? And I don't you know what I mean? I think it's a it's a it's a, even even other content creators with like 400,000 subscribers can get as weird as like a fan with no online presence. It's a type of person. It's a type of person. It, it, you know what I mean? It can happen even with fellow content creators. So you gotta be chill. You gotta make the right connections, whether it's a content creator or it's a rando username on the internet. You know what I mean? <gasps> Ingrid says, I found you through that shout out. Really? Oh, how exciting. I did not realize that. That's so fun soon after the first and said that the first allegation was why they were sharing their story. It was from a girl that claimed that when she was 17, we inappropriately messaged. This did not happen. This is how it started. It starts. It starts with Carson like this. Oh, Carson. Oh, shoot. Was I confusing stories? Was Carson the 19 year old who hit up the 17 year old? My bad. I thought it was dream. I kept saying that, but I actually think that was Carson. I think I mixed up the stories. Hmm. Let's get into the details. I also didn't cover Carson. On September 23rd, 2020, Amanda messaged me from her personal Instagram account, sending a message that was clearly a fan message. She thanked me for saving her life. Hi, chances of you seeing it very slim, but I wanted you to know that your content makes me so happy. I've been really depressed lately. All that's going on in the world and my life, your videos of your videos give me more of a reason to stay. You know how people tile LMAO and don't actually laugh. Oh, type. Jesus. I actually sit in bed laughing while I'm watching you. That means a lot. Love you, dream Amanda. And I replied to this message. In September of 2020, I was a lot smaller than I am now. So I got a lot less DMs and I was much more active in like the fan communities and replying to people. And all, all I replied was, oh, thank you for the kind words. And then I also replied, glad to make you smile after she followed up with the message. I put a transcript of every Instagram message that I've ever sent her linked in the description. It might not be every message that she sent me because there's proof that she deleted Instagram messages to Ooh. me. An old TikTok of hers has messages from me that wasn't in her post with the accusations. Interesting. Interesting. When she showed our messages, but my transcript tried to include those and piece it together. Um, but again, it, it might not be all of them because I don't know what she deleted. I only know what she deleted from the thing she accidentally showed in her old TikTok of the deleted messages. Amanda, on the other hand, how are you doing, Dream? September 25th, the next day I replied, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Amanda, the same day replied, I'm doing okay. Could be better. Could be worse. Thank you for asking. Amanda replied, how's your kitty doing? I love cats. I replied and said, she's doing amazing. September 28th, so three days later, Amanda said, Dream, I need some advice. I'm trying to become a small 
small streamer on Twitch, but not a single person joins my streams. How do I get an audience? October 2nd, so a few days later, I replied and said, try and play with your friends maybe? Post clips to Reddit and stuff. And then she replied and said, okay, thank you, with the heart. The next day she messaged me again and said, Dream, would you ever consider playing Among Us with me? XD. I guess this was this was during the Among Us craze. Girl, boundaries, girl. Still in 2020. October 5th, 2020, I replied, maybe, heart. Amanda said, LL, I'll take the maybe. That would be sick. I didn't reply. So this is a month and a little bit later. Amanda said, hi, Dream. And then she sent another message that was deleted after she made the allegations. We don't know what it was. We only know the last couple characters. And again, we only know it exists. Yo, I will say, content creator, to you guys, huge red flag. When people with no presence or no attempt to be their own self automatically go straight for the, hey, will you, will you promote me? Because like, just, just so you know, I, no. No, like that's, it's not a good sign because it feels leechy. So many people think if I just have a big content creator shout me out, I'll make a living. That's not how it works. You also have to be entertaining. You also have to be a content creator. So. I, I always think that's a red flag when people message me and they're like, hey, um, you know, I would really love a shout out or hey, can you like have me on? Like, that's why I'm very particular about who I collab with because I get requests for collabs all the time. But sometimes it just feels like they're people who don't even care about creating content and they just want an easy way. They just think it's easy, if that makes sense. That's why I'm not like a big the biggest fan of just doing coll again like it's not even that i'm a big content creator it's that they, they think i'm bigger than them so if they just i don't know you know what i'm saying it feels leechy there i said it it just feels like you're being a leech i don't like it okay exists because she messed up and included it in an old tiktok of hers and then i replied and you know later and said hi Amanda said, how are you? November 16th. So that's another. <gasps> Viola says Amanda harassed multiple other CCs and got banned, by the way. Mm, content creators. Oh, later. I replied and said, good, good. How about you? She replied and said, I'm pretty good. Thank you. November 30th. So, you know, another two weeks later, Amanda said, hi, Dream. I want to actually become a streamer like you and your friends. I'm just so uneducated on what supplies I need. Can you recommend me all the products I need to successfully? Yeah, this kind of stuff, like hitting a person up about like how to start off a YouTube channel feels a little bit too desperate. And it's like inappropriate. It's like, bro, watch a YouTube video. But it also sounds like you're giving, making an excuse just to talk to him. Stream, like computer, cam, mic, headset, etc. You have no idea how I would appreciate it. December 5th, 2020. So like a week later, I replied and said, almost everything I have was recommended by Bad Boy Halo. Haha. -ha. Amanda replied and she sent another message that she deleted after she made the allegations. That again, we won't know what it was. December 26th. So almost a month later, Amanda sent a video. We don't know what the video was. I don't think it was opened. I, I don't know though. I didn't reply. January 5th, Amanda said again, hi Dream. I just want to say happy late new year and Merry Christmas. Christmas. Congratulations on everything you've accomplished this year. I hope I am fortunate enough one day to be as successful as you. you could... Ugh. Yeah, see, I would have stopped messaging her. I would have just ghosted her, probably, because, like, you're not her friend. You don't have to explain it to her. But also, this is, like, this is just, like, again, he wouldn't know. You have to learn the hard way. I was young, too, at one point. I let people into my life I shouldn't have, for sure, because you want to be nice. You don't want to be rude. But this is a lot. This is, like, her vying for attention in a way that's, like, mm-mm. It's interesting, though, because we're all neurodivergent. And I want to be really open minded about this. There is and not just neurodivergency, neurotypicals, too. But there's like a high anxiety about people not liking you for who you are, maybe not getting back to you. I just had a conversation with um the thought spot about this, like great content creator makes stuff for audio ADHD and like makes really good content. We are doing a podcast together and like I'm so excited for you guys to see it. But I was just telling her, you know, I was like renegotiating our friendship. But I was like, just to clarify, you know that if I don't get back to you on messages, you need to message me again or like it's not personal or like we're good the way we're communicating. Right. And she was like, yes. And it's because we know that we both have the tendency to kind of like space and forget people exist. So we need to like remember like, oh, yeah, that person is, you know, but in regular like. In the regular world, people think like, oh, they haven't messaged me back in a few weeks. They must not like me. Even I feel that sometimes. So I'm like, oh, my God, did I piss this person off? And I'm like, oh, wait, no, they probably just forgot I existed. Like, I forget people exist. It's probably not personal. And you know what? It almost never is, you know. And so, again, I try to be very cautious about when I contact people, especially people I know who are busy. I try not to bother them with random messages unless there's like an appropriate like unless it's appropriate. But, yeah, I try to be very cautious just because I know how busy I am. I wouldn't want to like bother someone but now i know dream was a lot smaller as a content creator at this time i think you guys said he had a milli subs though that's a lot more than i feel busy now 
And I don't even have 100,000 subscribers. I could even imagine not being busy at a million. Am I crazy? You tell me what kind of computer you have, that'd be great. January 16th, so 11 days later, I replied, thank you. Amanda replied, deleted message, and then part of it was, how are you? But obviously, I didn't reply. April 13th, so... Yeah, so he's literally, like, putting a distance between them, but she's not, like, reading the vibes. And I bet if he said, like, stop messaging me, it would have felt weird and crazy because, like, she didn't do anything wrong. She's just being, like... She's not reading the room as well, you know? I, like a long time later, Amanda messaged me again and said, hi. I replied, hi. Amanda said, how are you? I said, decent. How are you? She said, I'm all right. Thank you. Then she said, I heard some snippets of the song you're working on and I really like it. You have a really nice singing voice. I replied on April 14th. Thank you. So that was uh, the next day. Um, she said, you're welcome. And then December 26th, so that, that was like a long time later. She messaged me and said, Merry late Christmas. Heart. I didn't reply. Um, January 10th, she messaged me and said, hi, my Snapchat was banned and I have no friends. How are you? I replied, Jeez, lady. Young people are really struggling out here. I get it. I was a young person once too, for sure. But like also, ooh, inappropriate. Two days later and said, how TF does a Snapchat get banned? Amanda replied and said, I'm pretty sure it's because I posted videos of me smoking, but all my memories from 2014 are gone. So sad. I replied the next day and said, damn. And then she replied that same day and said, yeah, it sucks. How are your holidays? I replied the next day and said, good, good. How about you? And then uh, Amanda replied that same day and said, pretty good. You may be wondering at this point, why are you replying to her? Yes, I am wondering that dream. Thank you for reading my mind. You seem clearly disinterested. You're taking days or weeks to reply, and then when you do reply, it's very dry. Well, Instagram has a really stupid feature that makes it so that once you've replied to someone's DMs once, you can't remove their ability to personally message you. True! I hate that. True! Unless you block them. You cannot be following them. You can delete them from your inbox they can still message you and pop up in your notifications. I'm showing an example on screen of my DM continuing to pop up on my alt account, just to show how it works. Obviously, given I replied to Amanda back in 2020 when I had a much smaller community, she was stuck in my inbox for the rest of time. You can temporarily delete someone from your inbox and it deletes all of your message history to them for you, but they can still message you with now a blank DM history. So at one point, wanting her to stop DMing me, I swiped her out of my inbox multiple times. It's actually completely provable that I did do this. I'm showing a video of my Instagram DMs to Amanda now, where they start in December of 2021, much later than her original DMs. Because you can't delete other people's individual messages and you can only delete entire conversations, this proves 100% that I was trying to delete her ability to message me in 20... Hey, shout out to my audience though, because y'all are so good with boundaries and thank you so much for respecting mine because I also have this struggle too where I will reply to people on Instagram sometimes when you guys send me like really good memes and I appreciate it or like really good videos and you guys do not keep messaging me or if you do, you don't expect me to reply. That's great. As long as you understand like, I'm not saying yes, I'm not like replying to your Instagram message so we can be friends. Like, that's great. I love fucking, I respect, thank you to my, shout out to my audience. 2021. It also shows a problem. The only messages that I can see from Amanda were from December 2021 onward. I had no context or recollection now, of her original hold messages up. to me. In Amanda's defense, even though in hindsight, we're all like, ew. At the time, imagine you're lonely. Imagine you reach out to someone. Imagine you feel like you have an in. Imagine the guy you're interested in is replying to you. Imagine he's a big streamer. You know, from her perspective, she probably feels like, oh, Dream and I might like be friends or we might be close. So even though it's very basic, even though there's no indication from Dream that he wants to be closer, even though, even though, even though, even though, I'm sure in her mind she's thinking, I'll play the long game. I'll get to know him. Um, you know what I mean? Like, oh, he like this, maybe in her mind she's – but then, of course, her saying, I have no friends. Um, I'm lonely. Oh, I have no memories because I smoked. Like, obviously, red flags. Obviously toxicity. So okay, listen, we've all been toxic. We're all gonna we're all gonna be toxic at some point in our life. It's a spec, you know, it's a in and out. We come in waves. It comes in waves, you know. So the question is, do we know we're toxic enough to change it? Do we know we have things to work on enough to change it? Are we aiming for healthy? Obviously, all the DMs she's showing so far do show some level of unhealthiness. You know what I mean? And she's reaching out to him. So instead of saying, Would you like to be my friend? She messages him and says, I have no friends. And then she's hoping he'll say, oh, no, I'll be your friend. You know what I mean? Which is where it's like kind of inappropriate, right? To me, that made it clear that she was a really big fan. I don't remember everyone that messages me, who they are, where I know them from, so on. She messaged me from her personal Instagram, had no connections to any fan accounts, didn't send me any more fan messages, and she had DM'd me many times talking about content creation and streaming. Some of which Of she course, and then they always do this. This is the huge red flag, right? 
right? That is the huge red flag is when someone's desperate to become a streamer just because now they know a streamer, but like they, it was never their passion to begin with. You know what I mean? Deleted. She seemed very normal, friendly, and implied strongly that she was overage. What I thought about her age doesn't matter that much because nothing inappropriate happened, but it does matter mm -hmm. to show my mindset because I don't go around befriending underage girls or mm. people that are obsessed with me or my content. To the best of my knowledge, she was neither. Viola says, I think something that can explain the seemingly weird behavior from Amanda is because she has BPD, like borderline personality disorder. Me too. Diagnosed 2017, baby. In remission. Four years, baby. Fuck you. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So, um, maybe. Yeah, I could see that. But also, yeah, I could see that with the boundaries and also like the hope that he, like she's not being completely inappropriate. She's just being slightly like a uh, kind of maybe even neurodivert, well, BPD is neurodivergency. So, um, yeah, maybe she's just lonely. Maybe it's her borderline. Maybe she's autistic. Maybe she's neurodivergent. Maybe she's, you know, there could be a lot of reasons. But obviously, whatever's happening is like a miscommunication. Like, we're just not communicating clearly, right? That's like the biggest thing. Continuing with the transcript. Also, just shout out to my theory about rejection and why it's so important and why rejection is fundamentally about consent. Because we should live, I think, if I don't like making prescriptions, I think what you should do is allow consent and rejection to be one and the same. Meaning, if we lived in a world where, where Dream could say, hey, thank you so much for interacting with me, but I would like to put down a boundary and like stop our communication, right? And then move outside of that. That kind of works. It's like, allow him a chance to say, I'm rejecting the continuing friendship, but it's not like a personal rejection. It's just like me putting down boundaries because it's about consent. Why would you want to force someone to be your friend? Why would you want to force someone to be with you, right? Willow says BPD is a neurodivergency. It's neurotypical, but not, neurodiver not neurodivergent specifically. Um, personality disorders, as far as I'm concerned, are neurodivergent and have been listed on all the lists I have found. All the research I've done on borderline says it's neurodivergency. And also often overlaps with other forms of neurodivergency. So, you know, I don't know what studies you're reading or what information you're reading. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a, like a medical professional. But from what I've seen, what I was told about my own borderline is that it is neurodivergency. So. Now we get to the very end, which was our first real conversation. This one was about music, which makes sense. It's something I'm really passionate about. At the time, I was working on a song called Trust Issues and some other random music projects. And in the middle of us talking about music, I gave her my Snapchat. I said, add me on Snapchat. And she said, sure thing, just added you. I was sharing music snippets with a bunch of people at the time. And as we were talking about music, I wanted to share them with her. And I'm obviously not going to send snippets of a Was this a public Snapchat or a personal Snapchat? new song over Instagram. Now, I've pretty much always used Snapchat as one of my main forms of communication. It was actually the first social media I ever got because a girl came out about getting groomed by her. Do you guys mean like internet groomed or you mean like actually groomed? And I mean to say that because I don't no offense to the internet. I don't think the internet knows what that word means. But do you mean like actually groomed or do you mean like internet groomed? Because those are two different definitions. A friend of mine wanted to start a streak with me and it's something I started. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're correct, Biza. Neurodivergent isn't even a medical term, right? It's a pop psych term. You're right. It's not even a medical term. I don't even know why I said that. I meant the way we talked about it and discussed it. You're right. Neurodivergency isn't even a real thing. It's just like a construct, which everything is. Even therapy is a construct. So everybody get ready for that. Everything's a real thing. But it's not in a medical, it's not a medical word. You're right. I'm sorry. Neurodivergency is um, a cultural word. Started using a lot more when I became faceless on YouTube. Because yeah, stuff is deleted. You don't have to stress over people analyzing or leaking everything you say. And for me, even for something as simple as a picture of my cat, people used to zoom into my cat's eyes to look at the reflection to try and dox me. This was not uncommon at all. So of course, I felt much more comfortable using Snapchat during this period, especially with people that I wasn't great friends with, but even with my best friends. Now let's go over her actual claims in detail. Amanda claims that after I added her on Snapchat on January 17th, 2022, that we started sexting. She showed that her birthday when she would turn 18 is on February 17th, exactly a month later. She claims that we sexted from around the 17th of January, the day I added her on Snapchat, to the 10th of February, and then that it stopped. She said that while she was still underage, we exchanged nudes. Her evidence of this was two photos of, supposedly me, from after she was 18, complimenting her. Her final important claim was that she traveled to Orlando in August and that we planned to meet up and have sex. And I just want to make sure that I blatantly deny this before continuing. None of this is true. And now I'm going into more detail. Now, unfortunately, because she didn't provide any proof of these things, it's difficult to be specific about some of the things she claimed. It's much easier to completely make up that something happened than it is to prove that it never did. Like if I said right now, prove to me 100% that you never sexted a specific person that you've had on Snapchat at any point, it would be impossible to do. But what I can do is lay out all the inconsistencies, talk about the proven lies, the specifics, point out questions that were never asked, 
best and provide all of the evidence that I have. And I believe that luckily, that's way more than enough. So first, I want to talk about the timeline. Every contact we've ever had with each other before January 17th is the Instagram DMs, which I just read to you, which okay. are now all public in their entirety in the description of this video, other than the messages that she deleted. She claims that sexting started around January 17th and that sexting stopped February 10th. So from the 17th to maybe February 10th is the time frame where we were sexting. So even if we say that it started a couple weeks before it stopped, you'd have to believe that every message you've just seen Okay. We went from that to sexting days later in 2022 before my face reveal. Even if you want to give her the maximum benefit of doubt and say that she confused the timeline, she turned 18 on the 17th, one week after she claimed the sexting stopped. So there's not much leeway. Secondly, we can talk about her Twitter. She tweeted out defending me from hate on my face reveal 10 days before the allegations and was liking my tweets, including a subscriber milestone tweet two days before she tweeted her allegations. With the timing of the face reveal and her allegation, my belief is that there was a lot of hate and that it's easy to get spiteful and join in on a hate I had ignored multiple of her Instagram DMs and Snapchat messages in recent months, and I had also made a new Snapchat that I didn't add her on. I still used my old Snapchat occasionally, but I just rarely responded. That's mm. my only real explanation for why she flipped so quickly from being publicly positive to me to lying about me, but I guess I'll never really know. Thirdly, Well, we don't know her very well, and I think that's a part of the problem. It's not like Dream knew her very well. I think there's like this assumption that because they were talking for a long time, they might have known each other very well. But it's pretty obvious in the way that he's telling the story now, we don't know her very well. Like nobody really knows anybody. Like even though I'm friends with a lot of people, like I don't know, if I don't know your families, if I'm not hanging out with you in person, if I'm not seeing a lot of you, there's always going to be aspects of you that I won't know as well. But to some extent, you can know people very well in a lot of different ways. So I feel like it's you know, you never know why a person switches on you if you don't know them very well. If you know someone well enough, you can be like, ah, oh, that's just their mental health. Ah, oh, that's just their culture. Or, oh, hey, that's their politics. Or, ah, oh, that makes sense for who they are. But we don't even know this girl very well, right? Like, Dream doesn't know her. So it's even more confusing. Like, why would she just switch it up like that? Now, again, I always assume everything is sort of like mental health. Because, like, well-adjusted people don't do this. You know what I mean? Huh, I guess as if she has BPD, then flipping on someone like this is pretty uh, probable. Yeah, undiagnosed, like unhelped BPD is very difficult. And if you're like having a struggling relationship with your borderline, it can be very bad. I was really lucky. Like my case was really, really good. Like I was higher functioning. I had like a really good relationship. I was working. Like I, I have a really good relationship with my borderline. Like I got the good kind, I guess. I don't know what to call it. It's like, it wasn't as hard for me, even though it was very hard. And so if you've got, I've noticed no help or support system and your borderline, it is so much harder because there's just so much more that can go wrong. You don't have friends to call. You don't have people to lean on. You can't pay for therapy. There's like so much more going on. Um, so it could make sense. Also, if you don't have values or morals or some sort of foundation, if you don't have something, you know, there's so many things that could go into it. The only photos she showed as proof that I groomed her were both pictures from based on her own evidence after she was 18. Meaning even if we give her the benefit of doubt and assume everything she's provided is real and truthful, she was 18 when these messages would have been sent and I had no context to the fact that she was more than a small streamer. But on top of that, I unblocked her Snapchat, went through our Snapchat chats and couldn't find either of the messages that she was talking about. I also downloaded all of our Snapchat logs using the Snapchat data tool, which she can do as well. And neither of the compliments that she showed were in the logs. Now, honestly, this is pretty useless information because there's almost no messages in the logs at all, but it's still extremely weird that she was asked for these logs many times. It takes five minutes to download and she never did it, probably yeah. because it doesn't support. I always do wonder why do people lie like this? It is kind of painful to see, you know what I mean? Like, why do people lie about these things? I, you know, and that's why I say like, there's got to be something going on because I just don't think people who are busy living their lives don't have time for this, you know? There are bad, there are like malicious people. There are people who are definitely like kind of a mean gossipy kind of person. But to go to this extent, like, oh my gosh, to falsely accuse somebody of something, you would have had to have grown up with like basically a really bad childhood, I think, to feel good enough to accuse someone of something they didn't do. You know what I mean? Like there has to be something there. I don't mean to black and white it, but I mean, there has to be something I just couldn't imagine someone lying about this without there being a problem. You know, I just, you know what I mean? <sighs> what she was saying. On top of those things, from everything she had told me, she was 19 and we had no inappropriate contact. The context of these messages would be a 22-year-old creator calling a 19-year-old streamer gorgeous on a birthday post while giving her a gift card as a birthday present. 
Finally, she said that we plan to meet up and have sex. Whoa. Okay, hold on. I While giving that. her a gift card as a birthday. I left over a gift card from Christmas cards that I got from my mods. Thank you so much. Aw, thank you. Merry Christmas. Huh. Present. Finally, she said that we planned to meet up and have sex in August when she was in Orlando. It was suggested that we meet up and have sex. I was either going to have him come to my the resort I was at, or oh he was gosh. going to pick me up and bring him to his house. First of all, this was before my face reveal. I did not leave my house. I was massively paranoid. I was not meeting up with a random person I had just met two months before my face reveal, let alone at a resort, which is what her claim was. I'm gonna go ahead and play a phone call with my mom just to give you some perspective from before my face reveal. How many times do you think that I left the house between 2021 and my face reveal? Six. Wow, I don't know, three? Maybe four. What did I leave the house for whenever I left the house? Um, well, I know you went to the dentist three times, and then I think one other time was when you had the um, kidney stones. <laughs> so oh, yeah, you're the ER. hospital. That sucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I think those were the only times you left the house. And we were worried because we didn't want you to call 911 because we didn't even know if they would come because of all the fake um, swattings and everything. Mm -hmm. So I had to come get you and take you That's to the hospital. <laughs> so it was probably five times that you left. Okay, what was the process when we did leave the house? Hold up, Viola says Dream's face reveal stream was over 1 million live viewers. Jesus. No, so no wonder someone wanted to take him down a peg. Well, that's not his fault. Everyone was obsessed. I remember when that was happening. I just didn't pay attention. It's just not my bubble. So I didn't pay attention to it. But oh my gosh, that's crazy. You know what's crazy too? Is like it only becomes that way because the viewers make it that way. And that's what's so insane about humans. Look, the world is a reflection of us as a whole. The world itself, if you're upset with how the world is, understand that it is a reflection of a species of humans as a whole. Things can't be this way without the whole making it this way. So you might be the outlier in your head and you're like, I'm special. I don't contribute to the world being bad. Are you sure about that, buddy? But also, like Dream could never have made his face reveal that big of a deal unless his viewers also and specifically made it that big of a deal. And that's the thing that I don't think people are understanding. It's like you are a reflection. You, all of us are a reflection. We contribute. This is also, crazy. What was the process like? Crazy. I pulled into the garage, shut the garage door. You would get in the back seat, way back of the van with a blanket over yourself and you wouldn't come out from under the blanket. Oh my God. Can you imagine not showing your face and people being this obsessed with you, girl? So we were on the highway. I was a little paranoid. <laughs> a little bit. What was the inside of the house like? What, what precautions did we take? Oh my gosh, it was like a cave. Um, every window was covered, even the high windows that were arches, we had to like tape curtains over them so that even a drone wouldn't be able to see in. Everything was covered. Yeah, so we had the, the banker come to the house because you wouldn't go out of the house, but we needed to set up bank accounts. Oh Whatever it was that needed to happen, we were the ones that did it so that you didn't have to go out. Okay, thank you, Mom. You're welcome, I love you. Love you too, bye. Again, as you can probably tell, what she claims definitely didn't happen. Either she's telling the truth and her story makes sense, or she's not, and it doesn't. Mm. Now, some other stuff to note. After her allegations, she deleted a lot of evidence. She unliked a lot of tweets she had liked. She deleted replies of hers on Twitter and TikTok that hurt her credibility. Oh. Contradicted mm. what she was saying. She had liked she deleted replies of hers on twitter and tiktok that he didn't say anything inappropriate jealous of your fans have no idea you exist. he said more than i was pretty say what you want but i'm gorgeous and your favorite youtuber thought so too it's giving jealous and ugly well you should know she's 15 by those text messages that's a joke she's not 15 but like this is so young so young now dream is very young he's still like he's he's so young all these young people with so much fame and so much responsibility like i do does not sound fun. She was saying she deleted Instagram DMs to me and only got caught because she accidentally showed them in an old TikTok of hers. And that's all completely factual and documented. Later, she was bragging on TikTok, calling people doubting her jealous, saying I'm gorgeous and my favorite YouTuber thought so too. It's giving jealous. Not treating the serious situation that she claimed happened 
seriously at all. People also found old tweets of hers where she was replying very inappropriately to other streamer friends of mine. She was even banned in one of my friend's chats for saying she wanted to sit on his face. These oh. accounts weren't linked to her Instagram, so I would have had no idea about them. She also replied to fans of mine questioning her with slurs. She also said that she was gonna lie. Oh, okay, well, relax, like, <laughs> and tell me that she was 18, but that she changed her mind. So you lied to dream about your age. I told him my age. I told him I was 17. I debated it too. I will go in even more detail on live tomorrow. Okay, this, I'm gonna, I'm not saying she did this because I don't know this consciousness, but there's a category of person that makes drama and clout with said YouTuber famous person to then launch streaming career and then start their content based off of that. That's kind of what it sounds like. Oh, come into my stream tomorrow. I'll talk about what Dream did to me. Oh, come on my stream tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Mind, I guess. So I was going to lie and tell him I was 18. She said she would provide proof of the fact that she told me she was 17 and that I still sexed her tomorrow. But I didn't. And that proof will come out tomorrow. And guess what? She never posted proof because this never happened. She tweeted out thanking people for all the support and claimed at the end that I deleted our DMs right as she tweeted this and specifically said my end too, which means her DMs too. Well, I just want to point out that this is impossible. There's not a single mainstream social media platform that lets you delete both people's messages. And we only had each other on Instagram and Snapchat. <gasps> Naruto says she was asking Keemstar to cover it. That's it. Fired. It's canceled. If you go to Keem, if you trust Keem, if you associate with Keem, if you use Keem as a way to tell your story, Keemstar, let's get into the news. Like, Keemstar? Yo, I don't trust no Keem. I don't trust nobody associated with Keem. The fact that Boogie streams with Keem says everything to me. Like, no offense, I don't do guilty by association, but I do think it says something about who you choose to tell your story. And I think it's interesting that you would choose Keemstar. Again, I'm willing to see you as a single consciousness. I am willing to do that work. I'm trying so hard. But choosing Keem to tell your story. Like I think about it all the time. Like if I wanted someone to tell my story, help me with my story. You know, if I ever had a story to tell. It definitely wouldn't be Keem Star, who has one of the worst reputations. And like, why would you choose Keem? Where you can't do that on either. She claimed that she was laughing and was going to prove people wrong with pictures of my penis. To which why are women always trying to shame men's penises? Again. Never happened. Lastly, she tweeted saying that she's getting the law involved and going to the police. Said she's Whoa. gonna put me in jail unless I confess. She Whoa. said she would provide more evidence. She didn't. Yo, get this girl into therapy. Get her a philosophy class, right? She said she would upload her Snapchat logs. She didn't. She said she would sue me. She didn't. <sighs> and now I'm making this video. She provided absolutely no proof for any I of I feel her bad for her. I do. I feel bad. Cause like she's probably severely mentally ill. She could have a brain tumor in her brain pressing up against her. It's just sad, bro. And said that she didn't have any because she wanted her favorite YouTuber to trust her, which could be a completely valid argument, except the. Hold on, hold on. I want to read that. Here's my evidence. I was 17. He sent me a picture of his penis and a nut pic to me. Doubt it. He told me he was he has a chest full of sex toys. OK, doubt it. I have a chest full of sex toys. I doubt he does. I didn't save the messages on Snap because I wanted him to trust me because he was my favorite YouTuber sexting me, which is exactly what groomers do. Oh, he's obviously fake. He's obviously not real. Obviously 101. You know what I'll say about the internet? I will say as much as the internet doubts survivors, the internet also is doing better at picking out liars. I know the internet doubts survivors, but they're also great at picking out the liars. The liars. <laughs> It's obviously not real. It's obviously fake. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I think she just has like, she has the same, um, she types the same way. It's like, you can always tell, not always, you have to be really good at it. It's really hard to tell a liar from a survivor, but there are certain things. There are like certain things they say. And I, I think this is, she thinks this is like a really good example. It's like you add in first your age, then it's like, he sent me a picture of his penis in a, in a nut pick. And it's like, okay, so then show it. Oh, he's a chest full of sex toys. Like, which kinds? Which kinds? I want to know which kinds. And then it's like, oh, I didn't save the messages on Snap because I wanted him to trust me. It's like, okay. And then it's like, that's what groomers would do. But like, if you look at any of the messages, like he would be a terrible groomer if he was a groomer. 
But it's not even how you groom people, but okay. And said that she didn't have any because she wanted her favorite YouTuber to trust her, which could be a completely valid argument, except the pictures that she posted were from a second phone, meaning there was no risk of me knowing. She was taking pictures of compliments from a second phone, but has no evidence of anything sexual, has no evidence of us planning to meet up and have sex, apparently from after these pictures were secretly taken, has no evidence of a singular inappropriate message from me or her, or even anything at all that isn't a story reply from Snapchat's story page of all your friends. What's more likely? She happens to have no evidence of anything she's claiming, even from things she claimed happened mm. after she was taking pictures secretly using a second phone, or she doesn't have any evidence because it didn't happen. She Jeez. factually deleted and hid messages. She factually lied about me deleting messages that I didn't. She called people doubting her, jealous of her, was banned. She reminds me of my stalker. My stalker was really similar, and I know she's just mentally ill, so it is what it is, and thank God I've already gone to court, we're finished, I don't have to deal with that woman ever again. You know what I mean? Thank God. But like they typed the same way. They made very big allegations with no proof. Like I wish I could talk about it, but I like I but like it the way she present it's like the way they present evidence is like the biggest accusations and zero they I got proof. I got proof. Show it then. There's nothing. And it really does hurt survivors to have to deal with people like this. And it just, it does suck in the long run, but it's also what it is. Like, look, at this point in my life, I've had enough therapy. I'm good. I'm zenned out. I know people are just ill and they're just going through their journeys. Like, I'm not mad at you anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't have to deal with it. But it is one of those things where I know this isn't a reasonable person, but they always do this thing where they make the biggest accusations. I'm being sex trafficked. I'm being sex trafficked. And it's like by a person who never leaves their house and is always streaming. How? You know, it's just like one of those things where I, with peace and love, you know, it's like, fuck, where's your evidence, girl? I'd love to support a real survivor, a real victim. But we're going to need the evidence. We're going to need the evidence, you know? from streamers chats before this for posting sexual things and she lied about having specific pieces of evidence that she never provided because they don't exist if she's willing to factually lie cover up and hide things how can you trust anything else she says as being representative of the truth lastly once again she said she was going to take legal action she then tweeted a picture of the inside of a police station and also said she'll come back with more evidence to be patient that it's a process and that it could be days and that's her last tweet it's been almost a year and a half now obviously nothing happened i waited and waited then I got impatient, so I asked my legal team to look more into it. They got all of her information, and after filing many requests, they couldn't find anything. So, annoyed and still impatient, I asked them to get more specific. And after a lot of digging, my legal team was able to track down exactly where this picture is from based on the colors of the walls, the cameras, and a- Ooh, I watched this guy on TikTok who does the same thing with like a blade of grass. Plaque outside the door. Then had someone go to the police station and requested specific records from this specific police station. And- checked every record they could, criminal and civil. I didn't find anything under either one of those names. And there was no information at all. I was not even in their system. So you're not listed in my system at all. So if you want to believe everything she said, you have to believe either one of these two things. Either one, she lied. This photo is fake. She never filed anything. And if she's lying about that, why would she not be lying about literally everything else? Damn. Or two, the picture is real, and whatever story she told didn't even meet the minimum required standard. Yeah, Rainbolts. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Oh, did he have him do it? Yeah, he does this thing where he, like, he's so good at it, bro. It's so good with it. He's so good at it. He just, like, he looked at this girl's glasses and he found out where she was. It was insane, bro. Of proof to file a single piece of paperwork that my legal team could find in over a year and a half. I also sent a photocopy of my driver's license Damn. identification to this specific police station, a copy of Amanda's information, and let them know I was happy to answer any questions. To which, again, nothing ever happened. Not a single question, there was not a single case, accusation, or anything substantial enough to even have me in any system. And inevitably, when after this video, she makes another thread or another post, reiterating the same lies that she has already said, or promising even more things that she never follows through on, go to the police or sue me. The standard of proof for you suing me is only proving that it's more likely than not that you're telling the truth. 51%, come take my money, but she won't. Because if she does, they're not gonna treat it like it's Twitter. She's gonna have to address all the lies. She's gonna have to address all the inconsistencies. She's gonna have to address her weird comments, her false promises, her character, and most importantly, be held accountable in her real life for Damn. what she's saying. This isn't online drama. This is real life stuff. Mm. There are real victims that have been manipulated, abused, and taken advantage of. Amanda, you are hurting actual victims. You are diminishing the very real trauma that victims of grooming and abuse have gone through. You are making it harder for real victims of abuse to come- Yeah, but she doesn't know that. Right? Like, guys, a well-adjusted person 
would know that. That's what I'm saying. Like, I can't help but look at her and think like, okay, how do we help this part of the population? Or do we just expect them all to die? Do we want them to old yeller themselves? Should we just like ignore them and hope they starve to death? Like, what's the solution here? So obviously, like, odd, like realistically, I think the solution is to acknowledge that like Wella just said people don't do this and that people with um, severe issues do have a pattern of behavior that looks similar to this. Big accusations with no proof and the way they tell their story is very specific because like real victims have a track record. They have really interesting ways of telling their stories, right? And so I feel like it's you you can lecture her and I do this too like oh my god you're making real victims have it harder and look as a victim myself or a survivor myself I will say that I I don't want to hold people who are mentally ill like in a way that they'll never understand accountable in a way that I you know would rather hold people who aren't mentally ill more accountable it is worse to me for people who are well functioning in society to deny survivor stories than a person who's unhinged twisting a narrative so they can be the victim and the main character you know what's worse a society that says they're well adjusted and still doesn't believe victims or a person who's not well adjusted pretending to be a victim for clout i just think it's interesting how we hold accountable the people who are obviously mentally unwell in my opinion and maybe i'm wrong maybe the society the part of society that's denying survivors even with proof they're like their stories, maybe they are mentally unwell. I don't know. And again, I'm using mentally unwell as a catch-all for like some sort of something is missing. But I don't know. I, I feel like lecturing her as if a a, a well-adjusted person would have made this decision. You know what I'm saying? It just feels weird. Forward. You are not a But he's victimized by her. And I, I think as a victim, he gets to feel the way he ha he wants to feel against his predator, right? Them. You are not doing a good thing. No matter how terrible you think I am, or that the ends justify the means, you are hurting victims. Just in case this video isn't enough for you to realize that, check your mailbox. And that's all I have to say about these allegations. Check your mailbox. Did he sue her? Is this a legal, a legal reference? Now, before continuing with other stuff, I want to talk a little bit about what happened after these allegations. After these allegations and after my face reveal, I'll be honest, I lost a lot of motivation. I distanced myself from Minecraft and I even thought about quitting and retiring. Of course, it was pretty scary and I just wanted to be able to upload Minecraft videos and have fun with my friends without worrying about people trying to ruin my life or attack my family or make up lies about me. And after all the swatting and doxing and fake allegations, it really just felt not worth it anymore. But also I had basically been stuck inside for the majority of the last four years. So I just thought I'd step back for a little bit. I traveled with my friends I met a lot of creators for the first time. I worked on music, had my tour, and really just stepped back from my online life. And I feel like during this time, I really disappointed a lot of my friends and their fans as a result. Mm. I didn't spend as much time on the finale of the Dream SMP as I should have. I wasn't good at communicating about anything, really, including important stuff for some people. I went very inactive on everything, and I pretty much isolated myself from most creators that weren't in my immediate circle. There was a looming cloud over me, and I felt bad talking to people because I didn't and by the way even though I'm empathizing pretty hard or sympathizing with her doesn't mean we can't hold her accountable you can hold even victims accountable I've heard people hurt people you can still hold them accountable guys like I'm not saying you should you should be able to hold people accountable but without becoming a monster yourself you can hold people accountable with compassion and love you can hold people accountable without wanting to ruin someone's life you can hold people accountable while still seeing their humanity. You can hold people accountable while allowing them a chance at redemption. You can hold people accountable without becoming like a twisted human yourself, right? I don't believe in revenge. I don't believe in like punishment. I don't believe in blaming. I don't believe in like pointing the finger. I only believe in people holding themselves accountable or society saying, hey, like if you keep stabbing people, we're gonna have to put you like in a, like behind bars. And then the person like can decide if they want to keep stabbing people, but like we're going to have to do something about that, you know? And so it's like one of those things where, again, like don't become ugly yourself because someone was ugly to you. I didn't want to bring any negativity towards anyone. Later on, I got pretty insecure about my creator friendships that weren't people that I was super close with before YouTube. And even though everyone that I was friends with was very supportive and had my back and would reassure me privately, I still couldn't help but worry that because there were people online spreading hateful things about me, that it would impact their view of me personally. At one point, I ended up making a massive mess by tweeting publicly about a problem that I had with Quackity because he wasn't replying to me for a while. We had both made translation mods and people were claiming that we were copying each other. It, it was just a mess. I was 100% mm. wrong with taking anything public. Anything that can... Quackity, correct me if I'm wrong, is that other streamer that was associated with the Mr. Beast video, yes? 
correct? The Spanish speaking one? Is that quackity or am I making, am I, am I confusing that with somebody else? Be handled in private, should be handled in private. And I've always had that belief. So the way that I handled it was totally screwed up even by my own standards. It was completely driven by fear and insecurity uh, over my friendships. Oh, this post is going to get a tiny bit personal. If you're not in the mood to be a little upset, probably best not to read it, though it's about the community drama right now. When me and my friends started working in the United SMP and the QSMP has not been announced at all. Quackity kept things very close to his chest and what he was working on. We were all probably thinking the same thing, the same general thing. We need my, another Minecraft server to play on. The idea was just to have a server to be able to just hop on Minecraft, play survival Minecraft. Okay. Totally screwed up even by my own standards. It was completely driven by fear and insecurity over my friendships, and it was not something that Quackity deserved at all. If Quackity didn't want to reply to me about it or wanted to ignore it, that was entirely within his right to do, especially given the awkward circumstances of everything. I'm extremely proud of everything Quackity has done with his project, the QSMP, and genuinely he did it way better than I ever could have. It's incredible and everyone really should go check it out. I should have focused completely on the good that came from it all and not let myself get stuck on trying to work something out as friends when he seemed perfectly fine working on his own thing with his own community. Again, there's a lot of things that can explain my mindset, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry to Quackity and his community for creating unnecessary drama, and I hope that people can try and understand my mindset, where I was coming from, and that even if it doesn't seem like it, it's all from a place of love and care for my friends and the community. It was just an emotional time and I made a mistake. After that, obviously even more time passed and again, there was nothing new with the allegation. There was no updates. I talked to a lot of people for updated advice, lawyers, PR people, people with experience, and everyone told me that it's in my best interest to stay quiet. As time went on, I disagreed more and more and decided that I was gonna respond against their advice. So during a live stream, I mentioned that I was gonna respond soon and talked about the allegation a little bit. And of course, after this, Clips of what I said were taken out of context. People were spreading far and wide that I admitted to grooming and a lot of other really impactful lies. And of course, because of this, a lot of people on Twitter took it as an opportunity to joke about me being a pedophile. Why is there so much drama in the Minecraft community? That's so weird. Like, what's going on? That's so interesting. Maria says, right now, Crockett is being investigated by the French Union for the mistreatment of his workers and volunteers on his current server that Dream just talked about. This is bad, but also, oof, that sounds confusing. Why would that happen? And one of those people was named Nicholas Cantu. If you don't know who that is, he's the voice actor for Gumball, Diego from Dora, and oh. one of the turtles in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I had a terrible experience in real life with this person, so oh. I replied to him talking about it and defending myself, and this situation blew up. I don't think I've ever oh. gotten more hate in my life. September 23rd, I went to a friend of mine's birthday party in Austin, Texas. When I showed up, Nicholas Cantu was there. He was already drunk and was drinking. He was being very aggressive to me throughout the night. I didn't know him. This was my first time ever meeting him, and we were not friends. Eventually, while on FaceTime to show his friends, he hit me out of nowhere. Again, this was my first time ever meeting him. I was there for another hour or so, and then when leaving the party, everyone decided to Uber together because it was late and there wasn't many of us there. Nicholas ended up in the front seat of the Uber that I was in, despite my apprehension. I thought, what's the worst that could happen? It's an Uber ride, and there's other people there, so I wasn't worried. Little oh. did I know. He ended up dropping his phone out of the Uber window in the middle of the highway, and after he got out to look for it, the police showed up and stopped him from looking because it was dangerous and dark. Eventually, the Uber driver convinced Nicholas to leave. Well, I wanted to promise you that I'm sober, so if you guys want to conduct a sobriety test. Hey, look, hey. We're, we, we're, we're about to head out. And after we left, the Uber driver was trying to give advice to Nicholas on the police, telling him that he could have been arrested, and Nicholas did not like what he had to say. You're retarded. You're f***ing down since you're going to give a f uh, How far did you go on your education? Who cares? Of course, I started to get involved and argue with Nick, defending the Uber driver, and Nick did not like that at all. Either you're going to be paralyzed or you're going to be dead. Like, I'm serious. Okay, man. And he was saying this, of course, after he had already assaulted me. While this was all happening, one of the other two people in the car with me that I also just met that night was recording him. He was aware of this, and he was actually the one that asked to be recorded. Thanks for recording, by the way. How long is this? But yeah, this YouTube video is going to be nuts. Subscribe to the Kanji Network. Tune your sets right there. The next day, Nicholas sent me a very nice DM saying that he was sorry for hitting me, that he was having a really rough night, and that he was high and Hey man, I hope you had a good night last night, but I don't feel right knowing I was dodging, dogging on you like a can corso. No chihuahua shit, I was coming for your neck. So I wanted to apologize for hitting you and I think I slapped you once, which was totally out of line. Even as a joke, that shit isn't right, so I apologize deeply for that one. But yeah, man, I was drinking and smoking weed, which I've had many people in my life and doctors say it's horrible for me. I went against my better judgment because I just had a baby falling out with my mom. And I thought my girlfriend was going to break up with me, not excuse for my actions and mistakes. But just thought it was important for you to know. Spelling four with the number four and two with the number two. <laughs> <laughs> 
Y'all are teenagers, bro. Being young is so hard, bro. I don't expect perfection out of young people. I'm so sorry. I'm going to be a mom about this. Like, young people are so fucking messy, bro. I get it. Being young is messy. This feels like a really fucked up, like, he's got some shit to work out, you know? It's not okay. But at the, um, I don't know why men like to hit each other when they're drunk, bro. I, I'll, you know, I get it. Um, but man, young people are messy, right? Substances, messy. Things, messy. Just messy, messy, messy. Too bad. Because he felt so successful at the same time. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Ooh, young people, bruh. Right? Mm. Okay. Well, you know. You know. And drunk and said that he was sorry for spreading false allegations that he knew nothing about, saying that he recognized it could ruin people's lives. Complimented me, called me humble, grounded, and a good human. I didn't accept this apology, but I, I moved on, and honestly, I felt kind of bad for him. I recognize that he was once a- Oh yeah, I want to say this too. Ka Katriana, Katriana said so COVID prevented a lot of people from maturing. You know, I will say this, guys. I did forget that for a lot of you, some of your most important years were spent in lockdown. And I forget because lockdown happened for me in my 30s. So I wasn't even thinking about it, of course. You know, it didn't change my life that much. If anything, my job got better. I became a full-time streamer. All that stuff, you know, content creator. Everything worked out great for me. But for a lot of people in COVID, it was like you missed out on the years that like uh, your early 20s. Like I can't tell you how important my early 20s were or how important my late teens were, or how important my development changed me just during all the socializing I was doing in my 20s. And so I know that if you were a young person who went through COVID lockdowns, I know a lot of people were impacted by that. Oh, no, it gets much worse. Oh, no. Am I being too optimistic? Oh, man. OK. Am I being too optimistic? Oh, no. OK, well, I'm excited to get to it with you guys. Thank you for sitting here with me. Um, but yeah, I uh, I know it must have been really hard. It, it must have been. You know, so I'm really sorry about that. It, it's going to you're going to be defined like your whole generation will be defined by those three years changing your life. You know, it's a bummer. Guys, I do need to take a little bit of a pay break. I need to wait. I need to pay a bit. I need to grab a snack. All right, I'm back. Let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Got me a little chocolate wafer. It's a Croatian little chocolate wafer. I put it in the freezer because I put everything in the freezer. OK, let's go ahead child actor and i feel like there's a lot of bad stuff in that okay so like the guy did the drunk thing he sent him a dm saying sorry here we are industry so i felt a little bit of sympathy i hoped he would just learn from the mistakes he made that night and move on but then of course nicholas started tweeting spreading the same lies about me that he had already apologized for spreading and recognized could ruin people's lives he was also wishing death upon me publicly in twitter replies and that's when i realized it wasn't just one bad night and people needed to know about this after I shared my experiences with him, he denied everything. He DM'd me saying I was lying, saying that if there wasn't video proof, it's all lies. He tweeted denying it all. Wait, what's all lies? Oh, I wasn't drunk or high enough to remember doing something like that and nothing I, I would do in a sober state either. Wait, he can't be denying the video we just saw. I want you dead. Bro, when you're an actual pedophile, you can't joke about being a pedophile. You want you dead. What are you going to do, man? Trying to fatten up pig? I already slapped you. What the fuck? You did say the N-word and the F-slur and the R-slur and tons of other horrible things, including things I will not mention publicly because they are not my things to say. You were also filmed during the Uber and there's plenty of people around. How is he denying the video? No. Did I fuck something up? He's denying the video? You're not a big man for slapping me. You're a piece of shit for acting the way you did. And I actually feel sorry for you. But if you don't have context for the fucking video or a fucking video, get out of with this shit crazy of you to talk there and said, what? Everything. He DM'd me saying I was lying, saying that if there wasn't video proof, it's all lies. He tweeted denying it all, which. So Wolfie says Dream made it public that the Uber stuff happened and then Dream released the video. Oh. Okay, so the DMs were before and then after. Okay, okay, okay. She deleted. And then he tweeted lying more about the situation. Damn, for now he's lying. Wasn't drunk or high enough not to remember. Oh, <gasps> no. Shut up. But also admitting to some stuff while underplaying it. He blatantly lied about the fact that he tipped the Uber driver when he didn't. He blatantly lied about me sending unsolicited dick pics to people. He also deleted that tweet almost immediately after. He blatantly lied about the reason he hit me and claimed I- You know what's insane? And look, again, 
I know it sounds crazy. I had so many opportunities to be much more like successful in my earlier years. And I think the God I do not believe in because I'm an atheist every day that I never became famous young. I don't know. It just would have been so toxic for me. And these kids are so young and so popular and they just they're doing it's all on the Internet for people to dissect. And I feel bad for them. I do. I think I feel bad. But also like bad behavior, bad behavior, not great behavior. Again, like everything is subjective, blah, blah, blah. But man, the way he's just, ooh, the receipts, the videos, the, oh, girl. It's like they can't even handle it, bro. They can't handle it. It's too much. And now he's just out here. Oh, when you, oh, when you know you got the receipts and people are walking themselves into, ooh, when you know you got the receipts, ooh. Called the girl and got slapped for it, which again was later recanted, but not after millions of people had already seen those lies. Nicholas tried DMing one of the people that was in the Uber that night with us to try and get them on his side as a witness. That caused the person who I didn't know at all to message me and tell me that they had videos of him being horrible from that night and that they don't like that he's pretending to be innocent. I asked them if they'd be willing to send me the video so I could back up my story since he was denying it and lying, and they told me that he was threatening them to make sure they didn't give me the videos. After I ended up finally getting the videos, I posted them and needed to defend myself against the lies that he was telling and wanted to share the proof. I also posted screenshots of text between me and the <laughs> Uber driver confirming that he had blatantly lied and didn't even tip the Uber driver. After I posted this, Nicholas went silent, deleted his tweets, and hasn't said anything publicly since. People still think that I lied and faked the Uber driver. Whoa, for real, for real? He, he hasn't said anything since then. My dude, this is the fakest text conversation I've ever seen. In my life, you just happened to screenshot it the day after. Or hold on to these two years. The green bubbles on the driver's iPhone. The world needs more people like you and your friends. Ivy. Ooh. See, this is why you don't get involved on Twitter. I keep my mouth shut. Driver's text or many other lies that were falsely spread by Nicholas or other people online. So I got in contact with the Uber driver from that night. Yo. I wonder what makes dreams so thorough. What makes Dream Dream and this other kid him? I interviewed him and I'll let him speak for himself to help clear some things up. Hey, what's the worst that can happen? It's an Uber drive. And oh. it, yeah, well, yeah, what's the, yeah, let me tell you, what's the worst that can <laughs> what's happen? What's the worst that can happen? It happens. Either you're going to be paralyzed or you're going to be dead. Like, I'm serious. Okay, man. What's going on, man? This is our Uber driver, who Damn. happens to be one of the highest rated Uber drivers in all of Texas. Let's he go. agreed to come share his recollection of what happened, so I'm just going to let him talk. When I picked you guys up, you know, he had a lot of energy. He was wild, like putting his head outside filming. The phone dropped out of the car. When the cop showed up, the cop came up to the car at first and was talking to him. And the way that he was speaking to the cop, he was speaking like down on the cop. And I'm like, man, like you need to be quiet because you're gonna go to jail if you keep talking to the cops like that. As soon as I said that, not even 20 seconds, the cop came and he was like, you get out the car, you're going to jail. I'm trying to save you from going to jail because mm. I don't want nobody to go to jail, period. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Something about like IQ. Like he felt like he was better. And I was like, nobody cares about your IQ. There's a lot of people <laughs> with high IQs in jail right now. So what are you going to tell them? You're going to talk to them and say that you're a child star while you're in jail. So I was like, I'm trying to help you out. I don't want you to go to jail. Even after you're acting crazy and wild, which most Uber drivers would have left. Wait, are you guys saying it's his ADHD? He's ADHD odd. And that's what makes him him. <laughs> Yo, who raised this bratty kid, bro? This kid's bratty. Get him, Terrell. You. you never said anything negative towards him while he was saying all this stuff. Majority of the stuff didn't make it on the tape. I think he's he was going through a lot of other things besides just being drunk. And the thing is, it, it doesn't really matter what he was on, what he was going through, the way he was acting. It was unacceptable. Wait. Hold on. I'm eating my cookie. Hold on, imagine recording an underage, drunk, high, autistic 19-year-old having a manic episode as a result of being bipolar and using it for blackmail. Is any of that true? I mean, is that true? I mean, the kid obviously has a fucked up life. He had a fight with his mom. He's got stuff going on. Child stars often have a lot of trauma. So my heart goes out to him for sure. But does he have bipolar? Was he drunk and high... Autistic 19 year old. Are all of those things true? I mean, if they're true, they're true. But also like, uh, you know, this is the complicated part. How do we hold people accountable without making excuses, but also being clear about people's neurodivergency or autism or, 
you know, a bipolar, all these other stuff. You know what I mean? Okay, not confirmed if he's manic, but definitely maybe autistic, question mark? Mm, but you guys are saying nope at the same time. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Okay, okay. You guys are saying nah, this is this is not true. Okay. Hmm. What he was on, what he was going through, the way he was acting, it was unacceptable. 50 or 60%, I may be wrong about the number, but something like that of all violence has alcohol in it. So if that was the case, all these people would be getting away with it. Like y'all kept saying, I'm sorry. Like we just met him. You're gonna be forgotten like the dust in the sand when you're in the Sahara and there's hundred million, thousand billion sand particles. You're gonna be one of those and I'm gonna be a statue erected in gold. Yeah, yeah, he went. He went all into the uh, Egyptian king and the <laughs> like. He's real creative. Yeah, did he? Did he ever? Did he ever tip you anything? No, no. That was another lie. Well, I don't know why he said that. And you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't even matter about the tip or anything like that. Don't say it if you're not going to do it. And don't say it at all. I wasn't begging you guys, you guys, for a tip or anything like that. Man, it was an eventful night. I don't know why a lot of people think that you were the one that mm. was doing all these things and making all this stuff up, and you wanted to do all this. I was like, he was the one that was trying. Yeah, obviously. So something's going on. Is it the alcohol? Well, either way, it's also the attitude. You know, obviously, we're not making excuses for people, but I always like to know why. So my ab absolute curiosity about life is why things happen. Why, when some people get drunk, do they appear sober and totally functional? Why, when some people get drunk, do they not? When some people, um, you know... Diamond says, don't forget being autistic, bipolar, and ADHD doesn't make you an asshole. That's you. Yes, but also technically no. So cultural differences, I agree with you. So first I agree. Okay, sometimes you're just an asshole. But also people's perception of you could also be perceived as asshole when you're just being yourself, which happens to be influenced by autism or whatever you want to say. So I agree with you. Being autistic doesn't make you an asshole. But sometimes people's perception of you feels like they're like, oh, she's so rude. She didn't even shake my hand. Well, I don't like to be touched. So, or, oh my God, they're so rude. They didn't even like hug me hello today. So just, I want to add some nuance because that's my job, right? That's what I do as a content creator. It's like, oh, okay, but like, let's just remember this, right? But I agree that being drunk also doesn't give you an allowance to be an asshole, but we often do allow it. We often do allow leniency for sleep deprivation, which is shown to make you literally see people uglier and meaner than they are, right? We've seen that people have a different relationship when their chemistry is a little off kilter. You know, we say things we don't mean. Dude was slinging slurs, for sure. The question, again, guys, my challenge to you is, do we know the literal context? So like people use slurs differently around the world. They're not objectively always what you would call in your culture bad, but they are often bad in a general sense. So you might say this is bad. He's using slurs. And I would agree with you generally speaking. So I would say that, you know, you, when you're drunk, you become like an uglier version of yourself. Right. And so maybe we can talk about how maybe you shouldn't get drunk anymore because when you're drunk, you say things that I'm not even sure you mean or maybe you mean them and you're like a horrible person. But I also believe in redemption. So how can we redeem you from moving on from the situation? Right. So it's like, how do we have those conversations? Now, he seems spoiled and he seems really fucked up. So where is that from? Right. Um, Wolfie says, I think he was using slurs in a bad way. Yeah, it seems to be the case. And I agree with you on that. Right. I definitely agree. So, oh, and he also called uh, dream slurs in a bad way. Uh Oh, that's not good. And he also called the driver a Neanderthal and he said he had Down syndrome. That's true. That's true. OK, so in that case, my question would be like, what do we do with that person? What do you think we should do as a society? I usually focus on the individual. But what what should be the it's not like what should be the consequence of this? Right. I don't like getting the police involved personally. I don't know if you guys are super pro cop, but, you know, getting a per like I'm not a big fan of it all the time, you know. So what do you think would be the solution here? He can't obviously be his bad behavior shouldn't be tolerated. So we definitely don't want that. We don't want to tolerate the bad behavior. So like what's a way like should he get fired from his jobs? Maybe how do we feel about that? 
You know what I mean? Overall, I'm glad Terrell and Dream seem to be having an okay attitude about it because that's frustrating. You know what I mean? He asked if Dream if he was Jewish. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Did he call the driver the N-word? Like, was who? He should be banned from Uber. Ooh, that could work. Maybe we could ban him from Uber. Maybe something like that. Maybe it's like something where he can redeem himself, but also he needs a timeout. He needs a timeout. I'm going to stop everything the most. I posted like literally just like two screen caps of text from you and um everybody was saying they were fake it was one of the messages where you said like there needs to be more people like you in the world or something and, and they're like when would somebody ever say that because they didn't experience you in that manner right yeah. those are my real words and i did feel that way so i'm letting you guys know right now all those text messages that was me saying it dream did make how cute Terrell with the shout out let's go the situation better everybody coming at dream that's not how it went down oh it viola says i think he was fired p.s i love the name viola how cute okay 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 mm -hmm. okay and definitely therapy and no alcohol substances and him are not friends it was nothing like that and now you're telling me how you got hit and it showed me who you are the first impression of somebody is a lasting impression and you were nothing but respectful since you got in the vehicle and you try to de-escalate everything that was going on. And all the people in the back, Nicholas, if you are listening, really do some deep diving in yourself and figure out what the real issue was. Do a lot of soul searching. See, what is the real issue? That, yes, Terrell. So Terrell is, mm, yes, exactly. What is the real issue that's got you so bothered, my bro? So that's what I'm saying. Don't make an excuse for his behavior, but I really want to know what the real reason is, right? Like, What's the real reason? Do you just have that bad of a relationship with substances? Or do you have some sort of mental health problem? Or were you hella like spoiled as a kid and now you think you like own the world, you know? So I, I'm with Terrell on this. I would love for him to deep dive. Like, why are you really doing this for real, for real? Because you are intelligent because I could tell some of your comebacks and what were you oh. saying. But the way you were acting was more of a cry for help. Whatever you're going through, you got to fight and you got to get some help. Don't fight other people. Fight what you're going through. At the end of mm. the day, I know we all make bad decisions and we have to learn the lesson from it. And this was just a bad decision that you made and just learn from it. And all the Yo, Terrell is Uncle Iroh right now. He's really spitting the wisdom. Different YouTubers and all the different people that were coming in about the situation. I do understand the entertainment part of it, right? And it's just a lot of seen a lot of memes and everything, but I was reading a lot of comments. He was saying this or he was saying that, or it doesn't make sense. All that stuff doesn't mean anything if you were not there. It's just speculation. And if somebody older is trying to help you guys out, my advice is for you guys to listen. That's, that's it. That's all you have to do. But you don't have to be negative towards them. And we have to stick together because there's so many things that keep us apart, mm -hmm. right? Just like if you look at it, it's the, the dream and... He needs to eat the cupcake. On this channel, we talk about eating the cupcake. Someone hands you a cupcake of wisdom, eat it, bitch. Don't starve yourself in the desert because you have pride. Eat the cupcake. And the voice for, for uh, Gumball. How about you and Nicholas have a sit down with me. We talk all the issues and all the problems out and we can show people how bringing things together from a negative to a positive and that was I don't know if Terrell is a therapist but I would recommend a therapist and I would recommend not doing it in public and I would recommend actual attempts to, you can't solve it on a YouTube video you need to solve it in like real focused therapy and effort see how that spreads it's in the universe amazing man well thank you so much I really appreciate you coming on I posted a longer version of this interview on my second channel, if you'd like more context. We talked for a long time. Now, before I show you the most insane, hair loss inducing, Man. I have ever seen on Twitter that uh -oh. took place after I posted this video of him, I need to reiterate a couple facts. One, I just met Nicholas. He was already drunk when I met him. Two, the party was not my party. I did not provide alcohol to anyone. Three, I did not know how old Nicholas was. And here's a video of what Nicholas said after I found out his age and critiqued him for drinking in front of the cops. Why are you a narc pedophile? Four, I was not the one recording and I only posted the video because he was lying and saying unless there's video proof, it didn't happen. So yeah, now that that's clarified, enjoy.
wait, am I supposed to be fucking reading all these, bro? Let's see who wins, Gumble or Dream? Dream when he finally uses this blackmail on Gumball. Hmm. Neurodivergent people in the LGBT community giving Nicholas Cantu the permission to call Dream slurs. <laughs> Being a washed up loser that, it, that exposes your friends online is way more unacceptable. L dream. Who are these losers with these L takes, bro? Oh. <laughs> that was cute. This blank let someone under the legal drinking age drink and then recorded his video and held onto it for years in case he needed it to use against Cantu if he ever turned on him. Yo, 71,000 likes, bro. Which room are you dream house edition based on the Zodiac? 15,000 likes. My biggest question about dream is why anyone that's successful would still choose to live in a weird swampy place. So they're doxing him is what I'm saying. What I'm saying. Okay, death threats, got it. As you can see, it got insane. Tweets doxing me and my friends and family got tens of thousands of likes. I have Damn. never seen that in my life. So I just wanna talk very briefly about how serious doxing and swatting can be. It's a common thing for people to say that I don't think doxing is serious. In a clip that got a lot of attention from a stream of mine a while ago. Oh, oh, dream. I'm sorry, I just had a memory unlocked. I remember a dream doxing story where Dream took a picture in a kitchen. Tell me if this is a good memory or do you guys, am I getting the story wrong? Dream took a picture in a kitchen or a house and he thought there's no way someone's gonna find him. But then they Google image search and found it on Zillow. I think it was Dream because I remember seeing that as a streamer myself who's had stalker problems. And I was like, oh, I have to keep note of that. Because I didn't think of, like, I don't think of how to stalk somebody. I'm not a freaking monster you know what I mean so I had this I read this article about it and I was like oh I have to remember to be careful where I take photos because people can like Zillow search me not that they would but like oh is this dream so many dream memories are coming back for me guys I literally swear I'm like I don't even know who dream is and I'm like oh dream 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 like now I'm a, okay yeah this is I'm remembering the story it's not funny how you forget that you even know. And like now I'm remembering all these stories. Oh, that's so funny. That story changed how I took photos. It did. Not that I think anyone is crazy enough to stalk me in Europe because I've moved countries. But, you know, people be crazy. Go. I said that if you have seven followers on Twitter, you shouldn't stress over being doxxed. I don't stand by that. And I didn't mean to minimize doxing at all. I had just said mm. before that, that if you dox people, you are not a part of my community, that I don't support you and that it's disgusting. It mm. can happen to anyone and it can be serious to anyone. I was just trying to make the point that it's less likely to happen to somebody that's smaller because people have less reasons to target them. True. And that if they were targeted, they had less reason to actually follow through on it. I think that's true. I generally think it's kind of silly how paranoid I am about it. But, you know, you have one stalker, you have, you know, a fear of them all, you know, but like, I get it. I, I totally, I understand. But even regular people do get stalked. Like, it's not just celebrities. Fun, fun fact. Anything. But Often, it's people who break up with their partners. Their partners stalk them. It's just not something that I should have said or something I should have explained. As it made it seem like I was supporting doxing when I just wasn't at all. I have yeah. always said that doxing is extremely serious. Wadding Super extremely serious. serious. Super serious. And I don't think people even realize how serious. It's not just, haha, funny, send a pizza to someone's house. It's attempted identity theft for my family members and friends. Credit cards being signed up for in people's names. Fans or people who dislike you showing up at your house or your family's house to try and break in. Trackers being put on your family members' cars. People showing up at your little sister's job. SWAT teams being called to you and your family members' houses. Bomb threats and the FBI having to make sure you're okay. People calling your 80-year-old grandma pretending to be you and terrorizing her. Jeez. That's all stuff that has happened to me, my family, and my friends. They're not hypotheticals. This isn't just that you don't like Dream. It's not just me whose life you're putting at risk and who you're harassing. You're going after an 80-year-old woman who has done nothing to you. Mm. It's not just me you're hurting when you- I do think there should be some sort of consequence for it. 
Um, maybe not like life ending because, you know, young kids do stupid things. But also I do think like doxing needs to have some serious repercussions or even more than that, even like showing up to people's houses. I'm sorry. Do you remember Jenna Marbles and Julian? Like, I think those fans showing up to their houses should have had consequences. Maybe not like, again, I don't want federal like, like fucking felonies on people's records. But I remember one of the parents, oh, my allergies. One of the parents was to Julian was like, hey, you need to get your kid out of my house. And Julian was one of the guys was like, hold on. Oh, good so tight, bro. One of the parents was like, but Julian, we brought our kids all the way here to meet you and Jenna. And Julian's like, I know, but you can't bring your kids to my house to come meet me. Don't you think that's weird? And maybe I'm misremembering the story, but I just that stayed with me, too, where the parents were like, but we brought our kids to meet you. And I'm like, bro, it's the literal parents as well contributing to this. Can you imagine being a parent? Can you imagine being a literal parent in teaching your children to basically dox and stalk people. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the blessings. You know what I mean? Isn't that crazy? I think that was the biggest disappointment was like parents were taking their kids to Jenna and Julian's home. Parents. It wasn't just the kids alone. Parents teach their kids that this is appropriate. How inappropriate is this, huh? Who make up lies or spread horrible things. It's the 50 employees I have who also have families and lives. It's all of my friends and anyone that's ever been associated with me. It's my family, my grandparents, and most importantly, actual victims who have gone through traumatic things. And that's not even talking about the stuff that hasn't happened to me, but has happened to other people. Pets and people being shot by police officers during swattings. People breaking in with a gun to kill a YouTuber they don't like. It's incredibly serious and it's not okay. That wasn't even the end of the craziness though. That was the beginning. Because then, during the midst of all the Nicholas drama, someone tweeted out, this, accusing me of sexting a 16 slash 17 year old girl named Jamie. Because I was currently the internet punching uh -oh. bag and it was proof that the punching was justifiable, it was spread very quickly without a lot of questions being asked. Uh -oh. Before I break it down, I want to immediately say that this is not true. I did not groom anyone. I did not groom Jamie and I would never be inappropriate with someone underaged. When they posted this allegation, attached was a video that of course went viral. It was a video from another phone of a Snapchat being opened, supposedly from mm. Dream, that had moaning in the background and a very sexual caption. This is the clip in its entirety. <gasps> Wait, I'm so sorry. I'm so into this. Discord says, if you guys know, the Discord is 18 plus. I have a feeling some of you in my audience might be from Dream's audience, which is great, but only 18 plus can join my Patreon. Thank you. If you join Patreon, you get Discord. And Discord says, I had a friend who thought it was rude that Jenna and Julian turned the kids away. Bubbles, bro. We all live in bubbles. We all have ideas of what we think is wrong or right. But I just don't fuck with that energy, bruh. Don't take people to other people's houses. What? Don't take your kids to people's houses, bro. What a crazy thing to teach your kids, you know? Okay, so let's go back to the video. Let's see. I was informed none of the videos and previous posted messages contain any form of CSEM, and they have been sent to me under an anonymous source. I was given permission to post these. Okay. What audio? The audio is muted. The audio is unidentifiable, unidentifiable moaning. I'll tease the shit out of you, kiss your neck, run my hands up your body. You look so sexy right now. They also attached screenshots of Discord DMs between anonymous people who were claimed to be two friends of dreams and said it was them discussing me having sex at a minor. In these screenshots, they say that I was confronted about it and that... He never sent me anything, so why do I kind of doubt he sent your friend stuff? He sent me videos and pictures, huh? I confronted him and he admitted it. She saved it. Yep, that's fucked. Hmm. But I admitted it. I've shown you every piece of evidence they posted without changes and I've mentioned everything that they've claimed. Now, just to reiterate, this is... Hold on. I know it's not true. Hold on. Evidence they posted oh, hold on. Without changes and I've mentioned everything... Okay. Cool story, bro, but why are you sexing and receiving nudes and sending nudes to a 16, 17-year-old girl in 2019 when you were 20 and says, tits so nice, what's your... When their age is in the bio, okay... Okay. They've claimed. Now, just to reiterate, this is not true. Every piece of evidence is either out of context, edited, blatantly lied about, or presented in a very disingenuous way. Again, I did not groom anyone. I also was never confronted about grooming by any of my friends. Now, of course, when something like this is claimed, it's extremely serious. So I'm going to break it down in detail. Okay, so who is this accusation from? It's from an anonymous burner account made the day of the accusation, which is interesting. So <sighs> we don't know who they are. Yo, did you see in chat just like a few days ago, bro? Was it yesterday? Someone showed up with like multiple accounts and every time I banned them, they made new accounts to harass me. Uh, genuinely, like get 
fucking therapy. But even more than therapy, like those people are never, that's what I'm saying. Like who has time to do that? There's something going on. My heart goes out to you, bro. You must be suffering for real, for real. But these burner accounts, people who make multiple accounts, all of these things, exhausting, bro. There's, I'm telling you, I think about every day, should I study the human brain? Maybe I should do this because this is fascinating. But also I don't want anything to do with them. Somebody else study it for me and tell me, why do people do this? <laughs> but we do know who the victim is. Jamie, right? And how old did they say she was? They said 16 slash 17. Okay. So what else do we know about Jamie? They said she left the internet in 2020. So because they apparently can't, let me tell you who Jamie is. I follow Jamie on Twitter, which people quickly pointed to as proof. As you can see, Jamie is also followed by Skeppy, Verb, and Spifey, other YouTubers from the community. I met Jamie when I wasn't even a YouTuber. I had just posted my first ever YouTube video less than a month before. Ooh, I fun fact, I follow no one on social media except for Instagram. I follow my girls, my gays, and my theys. But like on t Twitter and stuff, I don't follow anybody because I don't have time to see your drama on my timeline. But also like, mm -mm, I won't follow none of you bitches. Instagram is different. I love all my girlies, so that's different. But like mm -mm, on Twitter and stuff, like no, 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 especially not randos. Mm -mm, I better know you or your mom. You know what I'm saying? I had less than 100 followers on Twitter the month that I met her. I made a lot of friends around this time because I wasn't a big creator and I was part of a lot of online communities as a fan. She played on Bad Boy Halo's Minecraft server and was a fan of Skeppy. I was mm -hmm. trying to grow and make connections and I had pretty much just made my Twitter account. So I made a lot of friends. Many people from this time I'm still friends with to this day. People claiming that me following her is proof that I sexed underaged fans or groomed her at all is ridiculous. These claims are completely false. They were right about her age. She's 21 now, so she would have been around 17 four years ago. That's about the only correct thing they said this entire time. Like, remember they said she quit. Okay, so it was the Jamie, but is Jamie themselves making the accusation or is somebody making the accusation on behalf of Jamie? That's where I'm a little lost. Can someone correct me? The internet in 2020 as a convenient way to excuse any questions about her? Well, she didn't. She liked a tweet from last month actively tweeted all of 2022, and she changed her bio and Twitter account name when this happened, just wanting to be left alone. Oh. That's interesting. And she Jamie privated her Twitter in 2022 and only because of real life friends finding she it. She actually tweeted saying she only privated her account because some of her IRL friends were finding it and she didn't want them to. I wonder why they lied about that. Maybe because the person who's claiming this doesn't know Jamie, doesn't know anything about Jamie. Okay, so somebody was doing it on Jamie's behalf. Okay, that's crazy. That's crazy to do it on, that's crazy. So Jamie did not make these accusations. Wow, Jamie was used to get a dream. Okay, that's crazy. What? This is why I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't even like that Ethan recently did that. And I love Ethan from h 3 h 3 but he recently did that too. He said, I know she's saying it's not essay, but I'm going to call it essay. And I was like, bro, he's like, I'm going to do it on her behalf. I was like, bro, you can't just do these things. This is crazy. Harley says they didn't even talk to Jamie. Fuck. Okay, that's crazy. That's crazy. Okay. Jamie doesn't know me, doesn't know anything about me, and is being malicious and making up whatever they can to end my career. Let's Damn. talk about some other stuff. They also said they posted the videos with permission, which of course makes the videos seem much more real. Well, it's apparently me, and I didn't give them permission, and it's apparently sent to Jamie, and she didn't give- Who has this much time to make a snap video of them moaning, making a text? Oh my gosh. Them permission. She quit the internet. She couldn't have. They even critiqued Moist Critical for his video, saying how terrible it was, claiming that I admitted that the Snapchats were real, which I never did. In their original tweet, they notably- Wait, but who? Okay, Burner said that. Admitted that the Snapchats were real, which I never did. In their original tweet, they notably say, when she- Hey, 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 hey. Taylor says you like H3H3, H3, Ethan how? I like Ethan, like every little bro on the internet I love, okay? Ethan is my messiest little bro. And I will give him a noogie anytime I say, he's, just leave my messy Ethan alone, okay? He's, I like everybody though. That's Brittany, that's my biggest fault in life. I really do get along with everybody. Can I, I just think everyone's messy. I just don't believe anyone when they say they're not messy unless they live a very specifically healthy life. Ethan is messy. I expect messy people to be messy, and Ethan is one of the messiest, you know? She had her age in her bio, which seems oddly specific, just to remove the few people that would say, well, what if he didn't know her age? When even in their own proof, which is random Discord messages with- So why do people hate Dream? I'm not getting it yet. Like, why do we hate Dream? You know what I mean? Ingrid says, isn't he older than you? Shh, 
They're all my little bros, bro. I could take him and Sneeko and a bear in a fight at the same time. You know how it is, guys. You know how it is here. I'll take them all in a fight and three bears. Okay, why does people? Why do people hate Dream? I'm not getting it. Like, I'm not getting the the hate for Dream yet. I'm not really seeing it no context or who the messages even are. In another part of their screenshot, anonymous person number two says this, but for some reason that's cropped out of their tweets because mm. they don't even know what the screenshots they're using as evidence say. They don't care about the truth. They're just making things up as they go. Kiwi Farms is a cesspool. Kiwi Farms used to have a whole page dedicated about me and my stalker. And like, it was the most bullshit thing I've ever seen in my life. It was full of lies inconsistencies it was like kiwi farms is a cesspool of humans see i'm not again no guilty by association here but like man i really don't trust kiwi farms or anybody on it and because it's a claim against me people will just believe it they can say jamie left the internet no proof but i guess she did they say they got permission to post these videos i guess they did they post a video of snapchats so ah cognitive says do people hate dream or are they just trying to take him down to boost themselves hmm? that's a good question do people hate dream or are they just bored or are they trying to like get famous off him, you know? Hmm. Nethstar says this might be a classic taking down the giant. Maybe. Definitely. It definitely happens to other celebrities. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. Say it's mine. They never show the Snapchat profile or any proof that it's my Snapchat. But I guess you can't change your Snapchat name for free to anything at any time as many times as you want. So it must be Dream. No more evidence needed. They're telling the truth. Even with what little context and Yo, that's the weakest evidence ever. A screenshot of a username that you can change willy-nilly. Evidence they have. They have to crop things and lie to try and hide the fact that they know nothing. But the burner seemed so confident. They couldn't be being malicious. They even put in their bio that if Dream reached out, they would personally give him their information so that he could sue them. Because everything they were saying was 100% true. Oh, what? They, that's not in their bio anymore. I... Okay, you guys are saying Dream is like the top Minecraft person. So when you're at the top, it makes sense that people would come for you. Okay, so they might just hate him because he's at the top. Or they might hate him because he's queer. They might hate him because he's whatever. Okay. I could see that. That's that's weird. I wonder. Clipper says, I have no idea who Dream is, but this is interesting. Yeah, it is. Like that's I think that's why it's fun. It's because like I don't really know much about Dream either, but I'm learning so much about just like this part of the internet, like this bubble, you know? why they removed that. They did reveal who they got the original screenshots from. So let's see what that person has to say and why the burner was so <gasps> No way. Ingrid says, fun fact, Kiwi Farm started out as C-Wiki, a forum for people who would harass Chris Chan. <gasps> what negative energy. Guys, it's not good for your skin to be this much of a hater. Don't hate people. Don't consume your life with people you hate. Don't, it's not good for your skin, girls. Like, okay? Like, just... Furthest from evil, closest to joy. Evil's a construct. Just don't be, don't, oh my God, you imagine dedicating your life to just being negative about people? Mm -mm. Confident in their claims. Quote, I don't know Jamie. I've never known her. I've never had a private or a public interaction with her at all. Unquote. Wow. Seems like they have a whole lot of information. So I reached out to them to try and find anything that I could find to find out what this was even about. Because I've never been confronted by one of my mm. friends for grooming. And I've never groomed anybody. So I found out who was anonymous in these messages. And let's hear what they have to say. Oh. These screenshots are extremely out of context and used disingenuously to tell a story about Dream that isn't true at all. I haven't spoken to Dream in a very long time, but to my knowledge, he has not interacted with underage fans inappropriately or in any way that could be considered grooming. These DMs were posted by the burner without my permission and without ever contacting me beforehand. They were sent to the burner by a vulnerable person that was upset and being taken advantage of while under the influence of alcohol. I want to be anonymous and stay completely out of this because all the terrible stuff I've seen happen to everyone mentioned on both sides is very scary. This conversation was private in my life and no one deserves to have their personal life dug through because of anonymous people making false claims without knowledge or context about anything they're saying. This person was not involved at all. Damn. They did not consent to anything. Now, if you're a little confused, I am too. This is a burner account making up things. Their story makes no sense. Okay, so let's just summarize this. Please. This allegation is not from a victim. It is from an anonymous Twitter account that was made the same day as the allegation. This anonymous person claims that I groomed a girl named Jamie. They did not ever contact Jamie. 
They did not know Jamie. Okay. They got none of their information from Jamie. They okay. even incorrectly said that she quit the internet years ago when she's still active. I can't believe you guys fall for this, though. Not you guys. You guys are great. But I can't believe people fall for this. If I saw a random burner account making a random message, I would just think they were crazy. Why do people pay attention to these, like, things? Are they just bored? I honestly, what do you think about that? If there's a consequence for the people who make the original claims that aren't true, is there a con consequence for people who just believe the story without evidence? Because I kind of feel like we need to get our shit together as a community. Like, we need to be careful, too, about believing people without evidence. Like, I know sometimes it's difficult to get evidence, obviously. But, like, damn, y'all just running with random Burner 22 accounts? to this day they posted videos claiming to be from me to a minor they never showed proof that it was from me or my snapchat profile they never showed proof of who it was to they cropped contacts from screenshots lied publicly and said i admitted the videos were from me they falsely Damn. alluded to the fact that the victim gave them permission and ended up causing massive harassment and terror to jamie who they said was a victim of mine the person in the screenshots <laughs> claims that i'm not a groomer that they're extremely out of context and that the burner doesn't even know what was being discussed and that now their personal life is being dug into due to an mm. anonymous burner account. On top of that, no one even taps to open the Snapchat. There's no finger. You can't open snaps with a button, but it doesn't even matter because you can see that no buttons were pressed. So oh. how did it open? Nobody touches the screen. You can't open a Snapchat without tapping the button to open it. So ignoring the fact that there's no proof it's even me, how is this video even real? How did it open? Damn. The video doesn't even make sense. People have also pointed out that frames are missing and that the normal Snapchat animation doesn't play at all. But despite all of that, hardly anyone asked any questions. If you replied asking any questions, you got called a groomer supporter. Despite the fact that the proof was a video of a video of a video from screenshots of DMs of screenshots of DMs, you have to go four people deep to find anyone that has ever talked to Jamie. I'm not even Damn. in any of these screenshots. And the video of the video of the video has like 10 frames where you see the name Dream. Most people spreading this did zero research. Wait, 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 wait. Does that say, what does that say? Dream? Doesn't that say Dream? What is that? Stan Dream? Lauren, Ke who are all these people? What is that? Does that say Stan Dream? 10 frames where you see the name Dream. Mo yes. So, what is that? Doesn't that say Dream? What is this in reference to? So strange. Most people spreading this did zero research. But wait, they reported me. They even reached out to the Orange County Police. My oh. local police. They put it in writing. Put their Shout name out Orange. Oh, this is Orange County, Florida, huh? No, I thought it was Orange County, California. Never mind. On it and solidify that their claims are correct. Thank you for calling the Orange County Sheriff's Office. To continue in English, press 1. To continue in Spanish. Wait, Taylor says, Brittany, remember how Dream said in a recent stream... He said he was making a video to talk about grooming. Well, that same stream he went on H3 podcast. Really? I don't think I watched that one. I think I, wait, didn't I see? I think I heard about it because I don't catch every stream Ethan does, obviously. But I think, I think I remember seeing a headline about them when I remember thinking like, oh, I should watch that. <gasps> oh. My name is, I, I have a YouTube channel and I live stream and, and stuff and um, long story short, very recently someone anonymously posted a bunch of like fake stuff online saying that I'm a child um, and of course it's from like a burner, like anonymous burner account, can't really, you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, mm -hmm. in their post, they called, they, they said that they called and talked to the Orange County um, Sheriff's Office about it and of course they said that to try and like make me look guilty for being like a predator somehow but i guess i, I wanted to call and try and see get more information i guess what's your name people are there yeah, they're slandering you there's nothing and this is the we have a very broad database nothing no interaction i did last name first name first name last name nothing Zero, nada. So no, there's, there's nothing, no, no like no reports been made. Reports, anything? Nothing. Your name has nothing next to it. There's not even. So right. if you would like to make a report and you feel like someone is um, harassing you, all, all right. right. But whoever's telling you that stuff, you may need to file a complaint because that's harassment and that's called slander. And you mm -hmm. do have civil rights, so you can make a report if you want. Okay. All right. Thank you so all much. All right. Merry Christmas. All right, Merry Christmas. Merry but, Christmas. And not that taking legal action as an anonymous source would prove anything, but just to be clear, I have searched far and wide, sent open access requests to police departments. So you're not listed in my system at all. And all police records are public in Florida, where I live. Mm -hmm. Not a single person has filed anything against me. Anything. Even though every claimant has claimed- What did I say? 
What did I say? Everyone always talks a big game. I'm going to sue you. I already filed a police report. I already did things. And they don't because they don't have a case. And even worse yet, guys, the stories I wish I could tell you. Oh, they're so funny. I'm not. They're not funny. They're horrible. It was a horrible, stressful fucking time. But Jesus, like just the stories I could tell you of like dealing with court and dealing with legal paperwork and the way the evidence. Oh, my God. Oh, the story is so funny. Like it's not funny. It was very stressful. But in hindsight, years later, it's kind of funny. Like when you're in court and they're like, what's your evidence? And the evidence people present, bro, there ain't no evidence. You know, like, oof. Claimed that they have. Again, not that it would prove anything if they did. It would be disproved in court, but not a single person did. I also don't have any civil cases brought against me, meaning no one has officially accused me of anything from anywhere, despite, again, every single person claiming they have. This is public record. But despite everything you've just heard before this in this video, when this tweet dropped, people were celebrating in the replies. Celebrating in the replies of a tweet that's supposed to be about a child being sexually abused. That is not okay. And just shows that you actually don't care about victims, about this. You just care about taking down Dream, which is the same thing the Burner account cares about. They don't care about the truth. They don't care about what's real. They care about saying whatever they can to ruin my career. They don't care about victims. They mm. don't care about Jamie. And if For you sure. still don't believe me, let's hear a statement from Jamie herself, who seemed terrified, didn't want anything affecting her real life, wasn't a victim before, but is now due to all the harassment and people spreading sexual things about her without Damn. her knowledge or consent. My Oof. name is Jamie. I wanna make it very clear that I was never groomed. I definitely am not a victim of dream. I don't know how or why people are using my name and information without having ever asked me if any of it's true. Everything claiming to be about me was posted without my consent. Leave me alone. I want nothing to do with this. I have been getting harassed by people, either saying I'm looking for attention or digging through my life trying to confirm things I want nothing to do with. Leave Jeez. me alone. You leave Jimmy alone, bros. Jamie's Twitter account got locked for suspicious activity after she was blocking all of her friends so none of them would see the things being said online about her. She didn't quit the internet in 2020 like the burner claimed, but she probably will now. She had to change all of her social media ads and people were messaging friends of hers, all because an anonymous person made a claim on her behalf <sighs> without even knowing if it's true. Spreading sexual stories about her as a minor to millions of people, creating victims in the process. Hope it was worth it. So I'm sorry, Jamie. I'm sorry that you were used as bait. And I'm sorry that you have your life being dug through by people. And I'm sorry to all victims that have to see this, that have more fear about coming forward, mm. because all this is terrible and no one wins. And I'm sorry to anyone else that got involved or dragged into it. Damn. Sorry for those that were taken advantage of. I'm sorry for those that were lied to. Again, no one wins. It's incredibly hard to navigate these situations. There's no benefit to somebody putting their name and face out there to defend me or clear up complete lies if even when someone's completely in the wrong, they're still praised as a hero because it's against Dream. As I was literally about to post this video, another burner thread by a different burner was made about Dream. Oh my God. 24 pages of evidence that I groomed her. And the very first line of their- What? Repeat different burner was made about Jamie, claiming 24 pages of evidence that I groomed her. And the very first line of their document, the Twitter account Burner22 recently provided a screenshot of a Twitter DM conversation between them and someone by the name of Jamie. This is massively incorrect, a lie, and never happened, as you now know. The burner account was not any of the people in any of the messages, never spoke with Jamie, Jesus. and the actual person in these messages has made a statement in this video debunking this, as well as Jamie. And this is the first line of their 24 pages. Their proof was all to show that I knew Jamie, followed Jamie, and that Jamie was a minor. All things that they didn't need to stalk her to do. Maybe let victims speak instead of digging into their lives. Their proof digs so much further into Jamie's life, including by stalking four-year-old Twitter accounts of hers using the Jesus. Wayback Machine. So that even content that she deleted- No, 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 Taylor. Can we just end the internet? Well, then what would I do? I live here. <laughs> Look, the internet is a beautiful place. Just not this part of the internet. <laughs> and content from her private accounts are now being- Where would Dream go? Dream and I live on the internet. <laughs> docked. Leave her alone. This tweet has 40,000 likes in 10 hours as of me making this. This is ridiculous. Anyways, I tweeted when I first saw this claim pointing a finger at someone that I thought was behind the burner account. I was messaged by <sighs> multiple friends with proof linking them to the account. They were the only non-anonymous name on any of the screenshots, have a massive dislike for me, and were actively replying to the allegation. So my obvious Damn. assumption was that they 
are behind the account. This person used to be a friend of mine many years ago, and we are no longer friends for unrelated reasons. They hmm. claimed sense that they're only in- Whoa, whoa, wait. I lost. I was reading chat. What? Chia seeds, Jamie- to the allegation. So my obvious assumption was that they are behind the account. This person used to be a friend of mine many- Who who used to be a friend of his? Wait, I lost I lost my train of thought. I'm so sorry. Dream. Dream is private. The new allegation that I'll add in my new video as well as like an allegation from this person. The one that I thought was behind the burner. It's from a per oh, he has a theory about who's behind the burner account. Okay. Burner account. I was messaged by multiple friends with proof linking them to the account. It oh, okay. We're the only non-anonymous name on any that kind of makes a lot of sense that it was somebody behind the scenes. You know? Who's Nat? Nat is their name? Any of the screenshots have a massive dislike for me and we're actively replying to the allegation. So my obvious assumption was that they are behind the account. This person used to be a friend of mine many years ago and we are no longer friends for unrelated reasons. They claimed sense that their only involvement was that when they were drunk and having a manic episode that they sent some screenshots of stuff. P.S. Did you know manic episodes are very specific and actually not very common? And if you're having a manic episode, you have to have like a correlated mental illness from my understanding to have one. Like when I was a first diagnosed with borderline, I thought borderlines experienced mania as related to bipolar and they do not. I was just not sleeping, which was insomnia. It wasn't mania. So just like a heads up when people say like I'm having a manic episode, I almost never believe you unless you have a relationship with some sort of something that would actually cause mania because mania is like very specific. I'm not a therapy channel and I'm not a therapist or psychologist, so I could be wrong. But every time I hear someone say I had mania, I had mania. It's like, um... But did you? But did you? Into a group chat with people that were asking them questions. They claimed that they have no other involvement. They said they don't know where the videos are from. That videos were never sent to her. And that the screenshots in her DMs were pictures and not actually videos. She claims that she did not send the screenshots claiming that I groomed anybody. And that she had nothing to do with them being posted by the anonymous burner account. Now if this is true, which I can assume it is, it's just another horrible thing the burner account did. Taking advantage of a drunk person who is not having a good time and using their past with me to try and- Ah, she has bipolar one? Oh, okay, okay, okay. If she has bipolar one, then no judgment. Get dirt on me is just ridiculous. Now, I don't know who's behind the burner account because it's an anonymous account. And unfortunately, they removed the thing from their bio that said they'd tell me who they are so I could sue them. But regardless, my original tweets were worded poorly and people read into them, including her, and thought that I was- And by the way, mania doesn't make you a bad person. It's just a part of being mentally ill. And lots of people I know with bipolar are perfectly functional, rational parts of society who happen to experience mania. They're not bad people. Okay, your mental illness does not make you a bad person. Claiming that the videos were real, but that I sent them to her. The screen recordings in my screenshot were from after the allegations were made. So I don't know how I would mean that. I only posted screenshots of her screen recording my channel. I didn't have time to gather more about this person the dates of the log is because I'm currently about to fly. But again, it well in my video. I hate the internet and how cruel everyone, everything is right now. No one wins here no matter the result. You should def follow me back and read every single interaction between me and blank. We're girlfriends now and I think you'd find it quite romantic chats to show that she was actively collecting information but i see how if you don't know the dates or really anything then you could think that in my tweet saying i was making a video about this i called the audio essentially unsubstantiated revenge porn with revenge porn in quotation marks while of course denying that i groomed anyone people again took that as me admitting that the audio was real even though i literally said also i'm so sorry i don't mean to be pedantic about like words but a pedophile is a person attracted to prepubescent children. So even if this person was 17, he wouldn't be a pedophile. I know the internet does not know the difference between those words. But if you're going to jump into a bubble that orchestrated that word, I don't know if that word means something different now in the world. But it's just like it's a specific thing. And like, again, I agree that people shouldn't be involved with people under whatever age of majority it is in your country. But keep in mind, I'm in Europe where the age of consent is very low. And I don't like it, but it is what it is. And it's not my favorite thing, which is why I think the law doesn't get to decide what's moral. You get to decide what's moral because morals are personal. If you want to strive for the ethics of society to be different, you can have that relationship. Please, You know what I mean? But that's like just something I want to say out loud because I don't understand the grooming allegations of it being like a 17 year old because that's not how that works. But also, you know, just remember that the world doesn't revolve around you and what you think is right. And even though I agree with you, I don't want children and adults to be together in places around the world, including the United States, including in places like Jersey, the age of consent is a lot lower 
than you would think. So it's not great, you know, but I think we should keep that in mind. You know what I mean? Just, just in case you were wondering. Say essentially unsubstantiated and put revenge porn in quotation marks. It is incredibly violating to have audio spread to the masses saying that it's you moaning, that people think is you moaning. Whether it is you moaning or not, it could be anyone moaning. It does not matter. It's still violating. This is sent to your little sister saying it's you moaning. It doesn't matter that it's not you moaning. It's being said seriously that it is. This is, hmm. in essence, revenge porn. This isn't even the only time I've had claimed sexual stuff spread about me. Once, people spread a video that was like deep faked or something. Okay, first of all, oh, I know that username, Juju. They show up on my feed a lot, but I don't know who they are, why they keep fucking showing up on my feed. It's annoying because they I hate their tweets. Their tweets suck. Dream sucked his own dick. First of all, if he did, good for him. And second of all, whatever this account, anytime it shows up on my timeline, it's I got to block them. Their tweets suck, bro. Of me sucking my own dick. It obviously wasn't me, but so many people thought it was, which even caused some YouTubers to make videos like this. You guys know I've never been the biggest fan of the YouTuber Dream, but I have always had respect for him as a person. That ends today. Dream sucked his own dick. You know, I thought this was some sort of joke, and then I saw the reply. Was a video of Dream sucking his erect penis. Okay, why? Interesting. Why does why does Dream get targeted? I'm still not seeing the pattern. I need to watch. Maybe I need to watch some haters talk about Dream. Why do they pick on Dream so much, bro? Even Charlie picking on Dream. Why do people pick on Dream? I don't get it. Hmm. And look, I'm a. I will call you out. I don't give a fuck if you are all Dream viewers in my chat. I would call him out. But I'm not seeing any red flags yet. I'm still. I've got a little bit left of the video. He better drop me with some red flags, bro, so I can talk shit about Dream. I can't even find anything yet. I, lo I love Ethan. And I can name like 20 red flags about Ethan. I don't even know Dream, but I'm like, I'm not getting it. What's the hate for? I don't get it. And why are they being weirdly sexual? People are weird about him. But of course, while this was all going on on Twitter, it just was okay to lie about me. And all the people posting fake screenshots and memes and taking things seriously. Good evening whatever i would like to inform you that you now have until the next 24 hours to delete the parody accounts that you've created stop tweeting anything dream related huh seriously from parody accounts just proves how easy it is to fake this stuff so let's talk about fake allegations and how horrible they are it's become a bit of a trend in the online space or at least the gaming space to fake grooming allegations there have been fake allegations against bad boy halo which the person ended up tweeting and admitting they were fake and saying that they're just kids that made a mistake after he legally threatened them there have been fake allegations made against sapnap that again they admitted were fake after I replied this time and called out something that was wrong with their story. They continued to lie and try and convince me though. There have been false allegations again. I wanna, wait, 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 I wanna read that. I'm not even gonna let this one get traction. Blank or fuck off with the fake grooming accusations is not cool or funny. I came up with the name Sapnap in 2019 and before then it never even existed. He never went by Sappy on Discord. And called out something that was wrong with their story. They continued to lie. And then I don't wanna argue with you, they say, you are an idol to me. Gross. The screen. Don't pedestal anyone. Knock your, knock people off pedestals. The screenshots aren't fake because I took them. I know that my I know that by heart. I'm sorry if I caused problems, but I want you to know that what happened really did happen. If you at least asked what happened. A lie and try and convince me though. There have been false allegations against Carl, Rambo, Wilbur, probably every Minecraft gaming creator you know. Uh uh. Did I cover Wilbur? Is that the same one with the Shelby girl? Wilbur seems toxic as fuck, bro. But also, I'm not surprised, right? Like, it happens. He needs therapy. He needs to get his shit together. And he needs to decide what his morals are. Shelby needs to get her shit together. She's almost 30. Let's go, girl. But if that's the same Wilbur, Wilbur needs to get her shit together, okay? But also, you know, a lot of these people don't grow up with any kind of values or understanding of why they do anything. And then they get pressured into their bubbles and blah, 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 blah. You know? No, me saying any name doesn't even matter. Not everyone gets traction and not everyone has as much effort put into it, but there have been hundreds. There were a few notable ones against me during the last month. One was disproved because it was proved that the video was edited based on a frame. Okay, this was pre, this was years before. Okay, okay, okay. Up. Another was disproved because of a photo in the background was from Tumblr, but there was one thing similar between all of them. They all showed fake evidence. They all showed fake edited Snapchats. They all showed fake edited pictures or videos. And that is scary, but sometimes they didn't even need evidence. I mean, this is good though. I think it's really good that he's doing this 
because I don't think it's going to stop. I do think it's important to keep receipts. I think it's important to be well-intentioned. I do think it's important not to think the worst of everybody, but I think that this is probably going to be the norm. And I think that we just need to be ready for it. Look, celebrities get tabloids written about them. People get false narratives written about them all the time. And I think it is the responsibility of future content creators and current ones. Just, just keep it in mind. It's not going to be the first and last time, you know. And so just keep that in mind. If you ever think like, should I make this a job? All jobs could come with this. You could get stalked by somebody who like comes into your auto mechanic store. Like it's not that, you know, it's just the the internet kind of promotes it or encourages it more, I think. So just keep that in mind. But I'm I'm proud of Dream for having all of these receipts. Because I do think like this is just like a part of the job. It is a part of the job. You know, it sucks. It's the worst part of the job, the stalking and the harassment and stuff. But, you know, we all make uh, sacrifices, I guess, for the dream job. Someone tweeted out that I wasn't working on my video, that I was actually out meeting a fan I met when they were 16 at a bar, and that I got stood up and laughed at by everyone. And this just didn't even happen, but you don't even need any proof. It was Thanksgiving and I was charging my car. Wow, I like how every photo had his face cut out. My grandparents house and i went to a non-alcoholic bar and played ping pong wait mia says people hate dream because of his neurodivergence making him easy to upset and he's used to it and defend himself so liars realize they can get caught from this that's a rip it is hard it is hard being neurodivergent and having those like extra the right extra weight of everything for sure that's interesting hmm hmm and was never stood up by anybody. They can just make up whatever they want and rudely take secret pictures of me and people will believe it. This is crazy stalker behavior. They even said that I was the most ass ping pong player in the place. When I was undefeated, Rude. they even had to lie Rude. and slander my ping pong record. And then of course, parody accounts are tweeting images like this one, faking me DMing them and threatening them legally or lots of other stuff. And again, this just shows how easy it is to fake stuff, especially when you're a burner account that has no accountability. One of the people that made the fake allegations even tweeted that I can't sue them, that they're anonymous and on a VPN. After they were caught, people will take a claim with all- Keemstar, you're such a loser, true. Okay. Uh... Almost no evidence, and run with it, and ruin people's lives, <sighs> hundreds of jobs, families, not yeah. even just when it's me. It may I'm telling you, these people are mentally unhinged. I'm telling you, look, people fight all the time. There's miscommunication. There's fights on the internet. But I'm telling you, if you're going to this length, there's something like, you know, there's something going on. Only be a trend in the Minecraft space right now, but it won't be that way for long. Okay, XQC. <gasps> I know you're probably watching. Oh no, what did X do? Watching this. I want you to address this. What do you have to say for yourself? Can't stop thinking about you, dud. Like it's bad. Yeah, I know you don't want me to bring up little Nex's party again. First of all, shout out little net, little Nas, little X, <laughs> little Nas. But I need you. I need your gag daddy. Check snap. What's happening? What's happening? Is Felix is XQC gay? What's happening? Self. It's irrefutable proof. Look, here it is on a second. What's happening? Second phone. Prove to me you didn't send me this video. <laughs> or, you're a pervert. Forever. And everyone watching this will now know it. Or Pokimane, you've been getting some hate for your cookie prices recently. And I don't mean to expose you, but you did say this to me. They're stupid cookies. I repackaged am selling them. It's like 10 times the price, but my fans are stupid as fuck, so they'll buy them anyway. They taste pretty good at least. Time to get rich off these stupid little girls and simps again. Bro! <laughs> it's okay. I get this. It's a joke. It's a joke. He's he's proving his point by editing shit. I get it. Okay. That's fucking funny. Okay. And I think that's disgusting. Right? This is fake, right? This is like a joke. Like he's... Wait. Now I feel... Is this my neurodivergency? Okay. This is a joke. He's making it up to prove a point, right? Or is it, now I don't know. Fuck, I'm gaslighting myself. It's a joke, right? He made it up to prove a point that he can fake things. Okay. That's the, that's the point of this. What do you have to say for yourself? What more proof do you need? I also have the cookies she sent me and a signed note from her. This is okay. irrefutable. Okay, okay, okay. For a minute, I started to trick myself and think, oh no, what if this is real? Now I'm very confused. Okay, no, no, no. 
Okay, so I got it. He's trying to show us that he can. Okay, he almost tricked me by tricking. Okay, I almost got. I got it. Evidence. You get the point. I made all of those pieces of evidence in ten minutes. Which oh, only okay. He made them all in ten minutes. <laughs> Guys, I started to get nervous. Free programs. What's stopping anyone from going and making a fresh account, faking evidence, and then accusing a person they hate of something vile? Be careful what you believe and ask questions. Damn. Believing real victims is important, but not believing fake victims is very important to real victims too. As for my conclusion on this video, I have a couple things to say. First of all, I excuse he played along. That's cute. Okay, good. I like Felix. Okay, cool. I just want to recognize that I'm probably in this position because of myself. The people that made these claims undoubtedly had unhealthy parasocial relationships with me. And that's yeah. why it's gotten to this point. I want to and will do anything I can to denounce this. My view on fans has shifted slowly over time, jumping massively when I face revealed and actually got to meet fans in person, which made things much- Wait, what's RSD again? I forget what the abbreviation is for. Because Cola says he's a people pleaser with bad RSD that makes him a perfect target for people to go after. Can I tell you, people pleasing? With peace and love, y'all are fucking yourselves over. I'm not much of a people pleaser at all. And it's like a part of like me protecting myself, really. But also like I, I really try to be good to people. But I the way y'all people please yourselves into the gutter. I re stop doing that to yourselves like you. It's a self-sabotage. You need to protect yourself. OK, rejection, sensitive dysphoria. OK, that's fair. That makes sense. I know. I know a lot of it has to do with. OK, that's fair. Just ooh, the way I see people pleasers, like let people run all over them, girl. Mm much more real and massively changed my perspective. I think it's incredibly unhealthy to be obsessive with someone. And I also think that it's clear to anyone that's stepping back and looking at these situations that people obsessively hate me and are making up lies about me, which is also because of parasocial yep. Parasocial love turned to parasocial hate. And I have no yep. doubt that the anonymous people making these fake allegations were once big fans of mine. I grew up being a massive fan of football and I had jerseys of my favorite players and was very passionate. So I've always related to stands in that way, but my passion never turned to obsession and I never truly realized how serious it can get. Even sometimes when people were literally telling me, I think that part of why I'm in the position that I'm in right now is because I started pulling away from my fans after my face reveal, meeting fans. Yeah, even I had to do this this year. Like I didn't put a really strong boundary because my community is growing, which I just love so much. I'm so honored. But as my community grows, I also have to be very careful about who I give time to. And I need to remind people like this is work and I come into work and I take it really seriously and I work on it like 12 hours a day. And I just I love this job. But, you know, I I got to be careful about like how close people are. I make myself pretty like I'm easy like you can contact me pretty easily. But also like I this is really difficult, especially for like a neurodivergent or like a minority person. And you come to the Internet to find friends. and You come to the community to find a safe space. And then you realize like people get very parasocial and they start to feel like they know you really well. And then they start to feel like they can speak for you. And then you're like, oh, my God, what's happening? And it's like so weird. It's like the weirdest thing. But also it's like the greatest space ever because it's like a, a, a collection of all like people who have the same hobbies as you and people who like to think about the same things as you. And, but you know, people when they're together, drama is just so natural, you know? So I really, this is so real and I don't think it's a phenomenon like people really acknowledge until they say it out loud, but it happens at your school. It happens when you work at your job. It's like you guys get close to like coworkers. Think about it like coworkers. Not just online communities have this. Coworkers. I used to run into this problem when I worked at the deli or I worked as like with other people. It's like you come to work and you want to come to work, but also you want to get close to people, but also it becomes like drama and also people start talking about you or speaking for you and you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening? And it becomes like, really kind of scary to almost come to work again because you feel like it's not a like it's not a space you can even like breathe because you feel like you're waiting for the next the next drama thing to happen you know what I mean so genuinely like my plan as I get bigger because my channel is like doing so well right now is as I get bigger I will probably like make sure everybody understands boundaries and consent we're very consent focused here so there's gonna have to be a lot of that it sucks because he's so big already. So there's a, like, and he's so young. He's so young. You know, I've learned so many ways the hard way, but he's learning it in public with lots of viewers. That's the difference. Just in contrast, I've been as, you know, he's learning this in a very loud way. And it's, it's much harder to handle when you've got millions or thousands of people tweeting about you. It's a completely different experience. 
interactions in person made things much more real and I wasn't so chronically online anymore because I actually had real life and things to do. I think that the fact that I'm a very relaxed person overall that has relaxed boundaries has encouraged that type of behavior too. So I'm just going to re-clarify some yep. of my boundaries. One, I don't support any sexually explicit art of me or my friends. It never bothered me personally that much because I don't really care about anything, but it is just weird, especially if you're a minor and drawing anything like that. That's yeah. gross. I don't support anything inappropriate for minors at all. Art, TikToks, comments, anything. It's gross. Two, serious shipping is bad. I think that prying into people's private relationships, mm. being deeply speculative or- Super cringe. Don't do it. Super cringe. Anything like that is terrible. I don't mind jokes. I don't mind doing it for fun, but anything serious really crosses the line. Again, I've always found it funny being shipped with George because we're not dating and we're friends. But if you genuinely think that we are dating and it's part of your personality or you obsess over it, you need to get off the internet. It's true. A lot of, um, there's a, a, a subcategory of girls and women, and don't get me wrong, if you do it in the privacy of your home, it's one thing, but even then, who ship, write fan fiction, become obsessed. And I think that's pretty normal as a young person, and then you grow out of it. I was just telling my husband about when I was 15 and 16, and I read fan fiction with like, <laughs> this is so embarrassing. No, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> okay, it's embarrassing. But when I was like a teenager and then you grow out of it and you like move on with your life because you're just like, okay, I just wanted the story and it just happened. You know what I mean? But like, I do think it's interesting when I see like grown adults being like obsessed. And I think that's like part of them coping and it's a part of them like maybe figuring out because a lot of neurodivergent people also have a lot of relationships with sort of like teenage things and being a little bit young in a way. But I do think generally speaking, shipping, romanticizing, fan fictioning, all of that stuff, super cringe, grow up, but also, no, stop. <laughs> Anyways, it's stupid, okay? Stop. Okay, it's stupid. Anyways, let's put pay attention to dreams boundaries. That is not healthy. I'm sure I'll make more clarifications in the future, but I just don't want anything weird. Don't obsess over me or my friends. I deleted a video called Stands on my second channel that I made a while ago that I don't necessarily view the same way now. Mm. That doesn't mean that I don't appreciate you as a fan, but again, just be normal. Be the passionate fan, not the stalker obsessive fan. I've already had people with access to all of my accounts for a long time, but I will be slightly changing how I use my accounts now. At the end of the day, I do just want to make Minecraft content and have fun with my friends. That's it. Cool. That's all. Because of that, I've been a bit of a detriment to myself by arguing on Twitter or getting into petty drama that I don't need to. So because of that, I'm just not going to be using Twitter anymore. I'm going to have someone run my Twitter and oh. post tweets promoting my content. I'll still tweet non-promotional stuff just with it being positive only and going through multiple people. And I don't want anyone that's a fan of mine to take anything super negative away from this video or think about things in a really sad way. I want to be positive and that's one of my favorite things about having a community at all, spreading positivity and love. So Try and be positive. Say something nice today. Do something nice today. I don't want to keep letting this cloud loom over my head though. So I'm just going to move on. I don't plan on making any more statements and I don't plan on talking about this anymore. This is it. I just want to focus on making the best content that I can. So that's okay. what I'm going to do. I have tons of Minecraft content that I've been working on and I'm super excited to put it out there. Pretty crazy. And I've been working on some stuff for over a year now. I don't want to throw the excitement away. And again, this was by far the biggest reason for my inactivity. So Minecraft Dream will be coming back full force, stepping away from Twitter and just focusing on putting out awesome Minecraft videos like I used to do. So yeah, I appreciate everyone that watched this video all the way through. I'm sure it was a roller coaster. There's tons of links and information as well in the description. I also posted multiple videos on my second channel. See you guys soon. Okay, wait. So tell me a few things. So fill me in. Does he use Twitter now? Because some of you are saying he does in the chat. Is he back on Twitter? And also, um, I'm not subscribed to Dream. I don't know. Like I said, I've never really watched him. But I... Oh, this was the last video he did three months ago? Oh. I kind of want to see, like, what is a Minecraft video like? 128 million views minecraft speedrunner versus three hunter grand okay that makes sense speedrunning videos make sense to me that it gets so famous oh is this the reveal video this is weird hello hi i'm Guinness world record holder mine um may have heard of me may have not hi dream team house and meet patches what? how do i with the default like paint.net lime green okay and then was his voice his primary, his primary, like, that's what people were listening to? What's happening? Did I break YouTube? Oh. What? The following content may continue suic contain suicide and self-harm topics? What? 
Oh, this video, me and my friend play a new game called Minecraft Death Shuffle. The game tells each of us a different random way to die in Minecraft. If we haven't found a way to die the way it told us in five minutes, we lose. Whoever survives the longest is the winner. Can we die Minecraft's most random ways? We're about to find out. Also, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. He has a nice voice. He has a nice voice. Watch his, what did you guys say? Watch his, what should I watch? His, what I just saw it and I lost it. I lost it. I don't know. I saw a message that said, well, death shuffle. Is that what I should watch? Like, should I, what is that? Is that a new one or an old one? Oh, there. Oh, no. Death shuffle is the one I clicked on. What else? Is there anything I should watch? I'm just trying to figure out who he is. This video, three of my friends try and hunt me down and stop me from beating Minecraft. It literally is gaming videos. He's literally just making fucking gaming videos. I love that. I mean, I'm not a gamer. Uh, Manhunt. Okay, Manhunt's a good one. How do I find his man? Wow. Okay. Well, I'll just. Okay, Minecraft Hitman. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just saw it. This video is an absolutely new and unique challenge. Should I watch the first ever? The first ever? I'm going to try and beat Minecraft before my friend kills me once. If I die, the video is over and I lose. My friend gets a compass to track me and can respawn infinitely. This oh. was crazy intense. Can I beat Minecraft before my friend beats me? We're about to find out. Also, only about 14% of the people who watched my videos this month are subscribed. Whoa, really? 30% of you who watch are not subscribed, so let's go. So if you just realize that you're not subscribed or that YouTube The last one is better. You... The last one is better. Hold on. Is this the this last video, one? This video, five of my friends tried- This is two years ago. 53 million views. Is that the one you want me to watch? And hunt me down and stop me from beating Minecraft. The Five Hunters series has over 145 million views already. Whoa. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Most popular one is the best one with- Hold on. Isn't this the one with George too? The ending was epic. The video is long. We're not watching 35 minutes, guys. I just want to watch like a few minutes. Ready? And this could be the final matchup. Can they stop me from beating the Ender Dragon or will I survive? This is it. Minecraft Manhunt. Also, only a small percentage of people that watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you end up liking this video, consider subscribing. That's a very, as a YouTuber, that's a very interesting analytic. It's free. You can always change your mind. Enjoy the video. Why do I know that's George's keyboard sound? <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> you guys knew which way I was gonna run. I was run. so far behind because I was just had my mic on my keyboard. Oh god. Oh, I broke my sprint. Oh, I'm close to them. Go, go, go. I got him off. He's getting hit. I can't hit. see you on my screen. I can't, I can't boost you. We got him. He's trying to get hit. Stop him. Don't let him get it. I got it. I got it. Okay, yeah, so yeah, what's the goal? Are they gonna kill? Oh, no. What's the goal? Are they killing each other? What's the rules? They have to kill him before he beats the game? It's not I messed up. I messed up. Go, 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 go. I'm getting go, George. Getting the hay. He's going in the house. He's I'm going to get tools. I'm going to get tools for you. Oh my god. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. Stop him. Don't, don't let him get it. Do not let him get that, George. George, stop him. Stop him. Stop him. Stop him. Stop him. Punch him. Punch him. Punch him. I'm trying. I'm trying. Get him in the middle. Go, go, go. He's got a sword. He got him. Okay, you guys are saying to watch the last 10 minutes. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Last 10 minutes. They tried to kill him. How does they, how do they not kill him? Is he that good? Oh, you're too far away. He's rolling, he's rolling. Oh my god. Nice chance. Oh my gosh, he pearled. Where'd he, he go? This way. Follow me, follow me. He pearled. Where'd he go? It went, left. It, went, it went like front left. Yeah, 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 front left. I see him, I see him, I see him. <laughs> the, the pearl turned, it turned right. The eye turned right. I'm going grab for the eye. Oh my gosh, where did he go? What? Oh, I got it. You went, oh, you went, okay, you nice, nice. Oh, the eye. Aye, aye, aye. It's literally right above us. It's literally right above us. Okay. Wait, oh, no, he. How did he get that? I what? We were both standing there first. Like, Yo, I get killed just like trying to live in Minecraft. I had a Minecraft surfer for like a second, and I just I built my house out of dirt and I died. So I don't even know how he's surviving against his friends. Oh my gosh, this hill is so nice. Oh, is he literally a pro? Oh, I guess he would be. I guess that's what he's known for, right? That's crazy. I hear name. Oh, he's got a wired interview? Mm. Angry dog. <laughs> oh, I hate <laughs> you. I hate you. I'm going to be mad at you. You hit me? I'm oh, killing no. this dog. I'm no, murdering no, 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 this dog. No, 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 no. Kill those. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. He's moving. He threw another eye. He threw another eye. Grab, 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 grab. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I, I fell. <gasps> Ooh. 
Go oh get my the gosh, I have so much anxiety right now. Go! I missed the water. Oh, I missed my shot. Oh my goodness. Where is he? I'm dying. He's in the uh, Where's my pick? Here it is. He's, he's like going down. I think he's going down. Okay. Oh, sorry. Is Stronghold here? Do we think Stronghold's oh, right there? Where, where, where? Wait, where is he? Right here, right here, down here. On this, like, what is, what block is this? Hold on, I'm gonna afford it a bit, and then we'll look at the wire. Oh my god, get him. Oh my god, get him. Take the arrows. They got, there's no way. How does he live, bro? I had him three times. I hit him three times. He's gotta be low. He's gotta be low. Oh my god. Okay, answer. Oh, I hit him four times. There's stone for him. There's stone for him. I hit him again. Okay, what are we over here? Oh god. George, careful. R.I.P. George. Oh, Run! George, block! Oh, I didn't ah, that you're one. stuck! Get my stuff, get my stuff, get my stuff! Quick. I'm right by it! I'll defend it! Get back, get back! I'm going. I got him, I got him, I'll keep him back. You know what's amazing is how this concept is so good. This is a great concept. Like, this is like, I, I could be hooked on something like this. Because it's like, how the fuck? But you know what's crazy? I think what's interesting is that he, in, from a YouTuber perspective, he couldn't have done this without his team. Same with Mr. B, same with so many people. Like, you really rely on an amazing team to go with you. I can see why it's been so hurtful to see all the accusations in this community, like with George and with with uh, Clay, with Clay, is that his name? So it must be hard um, with everything going on. You know what I mean? But But this is interesting. Like, this is a good idea. This is a good concept. Ah! How did I miss him? Stop! Oh my gosh. Wow. You got it. We got it. Back. Oh, back. Careful. Fight. Grab I don't have an axe. I got it. I got it. I got George, hurry. Run back. Run back. I'm Run coming. Back. Okay. I mean, I used to watch Rust videos all day like back in the day when I played Rust. Like, I'm not much of a gamer at all, but like the few games I do like, I used to watch Rust games and I would be obsessed. Like that was like my daily. That was like my daily thing. That's it. We got George, it all. Come here. Come here, George. There's no way you covered Please. the entire thing with obsidian. Oh my god. Ew. <gasps> Ugh, I hate those creepy crawly guys. Let's go. He's chasing you. Oh, to oh, dragon. Like, you stand our ground here. It doesn't matter. He has to come up here and break this crystal. Right? He has to break his obsidian. We're fine. Mm. Wait, just what? The tree. Oh, <gasps> there he is. No, there's no. So wait, so he was chasing them, but then now he's trying to kill them. Well, he they're trying to kill him. No oh, way. Are you serious? <gasps> Look at him. The, the dragon. Oh. The dragon oh. The dragon is what happened? Oh, George. Gosh, I am I am Someone pour me some water. Pour me. This is the part of Minecraft that got me exhausted, like mining things and creating things and having to get. Oh my god, it was so exhausting trying to play Minecraft. Yeah. How much of? Oh there's god. no way. Like, how did you front. get that many? What? I am. Pour me water. Head. I did. Oh my god, he's gonna fall. I would fall. The guy, oh, so is the whole Everybody thing. Here. The whole thing is covered. What? <laughs> Yeah. So high up. What? When did you have the time? Did I go on a vacation at some point I forgot about? What? When did you get all the obsidian? What? <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, That's actually I don't know. Where did you fall? Here, here. Let me down, George. Oh my goodness. He's shooting at me. He's here. Uh, oh my goodness. How did that not hit him? He fights back because he's good. Damn, apparently. Are you fucking kidding me? Protect the crystal. I'm getting my stuff. Oh yeah, my yeah, god. Get there and knock him off. 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 Get there and knock Get him, George. Come on, you got him. He's looking at you, George. Oh no, rip, George. He's rip, George. Oh, come on, guys. Have been the crystal. Oh, Christ. I'm falling. I don't know. Where is he? Get to me. Come on, get to Where me. Where is he at? Oh, I see him. <laughs> I can barely Where? see the corner of his hitbox. I'm not going to lie. This kind of stuff is so funny to me. I'm such a boy, but like this stuff is so funny to me. <laughs> Where? Oh, he's, got, what he he's like, he put uh. himself in obsidian. We can't get in. Right, I, I, I only have a Good luck. Oh my come God. On. Okay, am I stupid? Isn't he hitting it with like 
is that a shit weapon or is that an okay weapon? I don't get it. Okay, I get it. It's okay. We're, we're done. We we're can done. stop him, George. I have efficiency. He doesn't. I just like the idea that he's hiding in like a cave and nobody knows. And they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait. I think it's I faster than his. Oh. Wait. Oh. I think it's faster than his. <gasps> oh my gosh. Just get ready to jump in there and Give stop him. Spare I see his arm right there. I see his arm He's shifting. Oh my gosh. Gosh. Get ready, George. Get ready. Oh, no. I'm going to spam hitting him. Oh, fuck. <gasps> Bye. Oh. Bye. No. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. The crystal Wait, broke. How? They literally had him surrounded, bro. From the TNT. I just wasted so no. much time. No. What? Wait, the dragon isn't even healing. Right the, here. The, the so, okay, so the he's going to have to beat the dragon to beat the game, right? And then he beats the dragon and he beats the game so the boys lose, right? Guys, he's literally right here. Get him! I broke, the, I broke his shield. There's three Endermen trying to murder me. There's literally three Endermen trying to murder me. He's killing the dragon! He's killing the I'm dragon! Yeah, he's killing it! Go, go, go! Oh my god. Yeah, I have to kill these Endermen. I have to kill these Endermen. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, we got on the way. This good. Wait, Guys, stop. I have obsidian. I have obsidian. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. Oh my gosh, this stupid Enderman. Did you get your stuff back? Yeah. Nice. I can't tell who I'm rooting for. I keep going like, oh, I hope they kill him, and then I hope he wins. Oh Come my on. god. Ah. This stupid Enderman won't die. Nice. Get him. Protect the dragon. Protect the dragon. I'm staying towards the middle. We keep killing. Bad. <laughs> Guys, I have to be in hell. I'm behind you. Guys. I'm behind you. <laughs> This must be what? so fun. What? What? Oh my god, he died. I didn't expect him to die. This is, must be so fun. That's it. Like, this is so cute. That must have been. That has to be fun, bro. That must have. That, okay. Like, that must be so fun. I can't believe he died. That's awesome. That's great. That's great. I really thought he was going to win, bro. That's cute. I think that's adorable. I like that. I like group activities. I mean, I think everyone kind of like dreams of like a friend group to like do stuff like this with because it's kind of it's just fun. Oh, damn, though. I thought he was going to win, bro. My heart just like whoop, whoop, when he died. That was cute. That was cute. OK, cool. OK. And then you guys said something about wired interview uh, dream. That was cute. OK, I get it. Good vibes. Good vibes. Um, I love Colin and Samir. I'll check that out. Wired interview. Okay, this one. Hi, I'm Dream. Whoa, audio killing it, bro. Oh, Dream looks so interestingly different every time I see him. Does he even look like the same person every time, bro? Hi, I'm Dream, and this is the Wired. Okay, is the audio as loud for you? Can you do you see the difference between his audio and this audio? Damn. Auto complete interview. I like to say that I'm six foot two. Did Dream put the mask back on? Kind of. It just depends. I want to make sure that I still have the mask. I love the mask. It's great. And what it stands for is. Yeah, he literally looks like a different person every time I see him. This is so interesting. I'm just being. I mean, look at his face. He has such an interesting aesthetic. Does he dye his hair or is that its color? It's interesting. Dream or I'm, you know, I want to represent that part of myself and I wear it. So it's kind of a 50-50. So I guess. Yes, but no. <clears throat> what is Dream SMP Minecraft? SMP stands for Survival Multiplayer, and Dream SMP was a server that I started with a bunch of my friends. And it just became a bigger and bigger thing with like role play, and it was almost like people would watch. He does have a nice voice. Yeah, I get it. That voice steals girlfriends. He does have a good voice. Watch it kind of like an anime. It was. I'm trying to think of what I would have imagined he'd look like if I didn't see him. Villains, and I was one of them. Is Dream SMP scripted? Yes, yes, Dream SMP was scripted. There was a lot of improv and there was a lot of moments that happened and sometimes we would plan out like, all right, well, we don't know exactly what we want to happen. We want these key points we have like. I, I, I guess I could, yeah, he's got a very like. He's like got a deeper. He's got a to his voice. Um, He doesn't. I don't know if he looks like his voice, but to be fair, I think he looks like he'd have a higher pitched voice, maybe. Like this person's gonna die and we don't know exactly how yet. And then we just kind of go through and let things go as they do. So yes, it was scripted for sure. Did Dream 
go to college. I have ADHD, so I always struggled in school. I was always like from a, a pretty young age, like I'm mm. not going to college. My parents would always be like, well, you need to do something if you're not gonna go to college. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna get certifications and try and learn. So I learned to code. I got a bunch of like technical certifications. And so no, I, I didn't, but I- Yeah, Alex says his voice comes from the very bottom of his chest, yeah. Oh, Discord said, that's my hair color. You can't get that color out of a bottle. Yeah, it's very unique. It's a very unique hair color. Tried to make up for it in other ways. Is Dream a Minecraft god? Yes, I am a Minecraft god. You should not Absolutely. mess with me. You will lose. Where is Dream Minecraft from? I'm from Orlando and Dream Minecraft's from me trying to say dream on and inspire yourself. Dream on. Okay, this is cute. Okay, what's the other one you guys said to look up? Something about vlog, meetup, something dream, and how you spell George? My dyslexia. I'm dyslexic. I can't spell George. George vlog something? Which I feel like will only make sense. I made dream in real life. Okay. Okay. So I'm just. They're like little babies. They're like a little baby. He's like a little baby. Sitting here waiting for Dream. This is a year old, and he look how much younger George looks compared to the George we just recently watched. For sure. Sound up when to go get him. It's all happening right now. That's me just two minutes away from meeting my best friend Clay, or as you may know him as Dream. Look how little, look how different he looks. Is this the video? He looks so different in this video. We first met each other on the internet over seven years ago. And today- Whoa! I've made, I have some internet friends that I've known for like six, seven years. We haven't met, but I love them anyways. Hey, I'm finally going to meet him in real life for the first time ever. Also, I have never seen his face before. No. What? What? Seven years and he never saw his face? Joke. But I'm going to be moving from England to Florida to move in with him anyway. What could possibly go wrong? I've wanted to move in with him and my other friend Sapnap for literally years now. But Whoa. due to certain global circumstances, we weren't really allowed to. I also had another huge problem. I did not have a US visa. So oh. I only had one option. I had to marry Dream to get a green card. No, but seriously, I had to start the- Man, the old, the scripting in videos is so funny. Like he's, he's got a, like he's scripting. He's like making funny jokes. It's like super cute. I understand why, like I, I, Obviously not the kind of content I normally watch, but I can see why this was so nice. I think it's interesting growing up with the different eras of YouTube, right? Like I've seen so many groups come and go. Are they, correct me if I'm wrong, you know how the vlog squad was a thing? Are they like the Minecraft vlog squad? That's probably a bad comparison, but is that like kind of similar? Long, gruesome, terrible. Hopefully no one in this group is David Dobrik. Process of applying for a United States of America visa. But after many, many months, I got denied. But Ooh. that didn't stop me. I had a mission. I must get a US visa. I researched day and night and I finally worked it out. I just had to wait and wait I did. I finally got my visa. So Dream promised me that as soon as I got my visa, he would show me his face, which would make- Okay, you guys are saying not really, they're not really like the vlog squad, they're just streamers. Okay, I guess it's different. I guess it's different too because the vlog squad was like always in person doing stuff and they're like online streamers together. Mmm. Be one of the first people in the world to see his face. So I called him. Hello? Are you memeing? Are you memeing me? I'm serious. You're being completely serious. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah. You sure you don't want to wait to see me in person? I'm ready. I've got I've got my camera set up. I'm all ready to go. I guess I'm just, I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna go, I'm going to look in a mirror, make sure I don't look <laughs> Okay, so he's going to face reveal. <laughs> oh my God. I'm about to see what Dream looks like for the first time ever. Like literally whenever I tell people that I haven't seen him, like friends, family, they never believe me. They think I'm lying, but it's literally the truth. I haven't seen him. I'm not just saying this for the video. Today is the day. I'm not even ready. Oh my gosh. This is like nervous. I don't even want to look. Like, like, I'm actually scared. Okay, okay, I'm just gonna do it. I was waiting so long. <laughs> Hello. Oh Hi. my, I actually was not ex- I don't know what I was expecting. You actually don't look at all like what I- I, uh, Maybe people imagine Dream with dark hair, and so when he comes out with lighter hair, it looks different. I was expecting. Oh my God. <laughs> this is so weird. You seeing me for the first time? <laughs> <We're> <laughs> This is, it doesn't feel real. Why are you looking at me like that? He keeps, he keeps going like this. I don't know. I don't know. 
anything on camera. I've just, I feel like I've, I've, this is my first FaceTime ever. I was gonna say, like, have you ever FaceTimed anyone? I'm your first FaceTime. Wait, ever? Ever. You said you didn't expect my hair to look like this. What did you expect my hair to look like? I don't know. My hair will be different whenever you see me in person. Oh my God, I'm gonna be the only like person that. to see this haircut. I'm gonna screenshot it. I'm, screen, I'm screenshotting, I'm screenshotting. No, no. <laughs> All right, Dream. I'll see you in America. Hey, look, America. I can do a phone transition, ready? Say bye, Dream. Bye. He said he was blonde, that shit is not blonde. He's like, what is it called? He's like a blonde redhead. He's like a red blonde. He, it's a very unique color. Is it more blonde? Okay, I meet people all the time who are like, I'm blonde. I was like, you're not blonde, bro. But like, I kind of like, I think that he's more blonde than not blonde. Yeah, strawberry blonde. Is he strawberry blonde? Guess says, can you see why he had to clarify that they're not dating? Um, I don't know. I think I come from a different world where like I'm very affectionate with my friends and all of my friends and I feel very affectionate, but I can see why people might think we're dating when we're not. So yeah, I guess I could see why people thought they were dating. <clears throat> Phone transition. So I was ready to pack up all of my bags and move to- I mean, I also come from a to totally different bubble where like I, I used to have sex with my friends, but like we weren't dating. We just liked each other and we got along, but like- and they're all really great friends. Like all of us have like moved on and we're all like in different relationships and stuff. But like we were never. So I don't know. Like I don't know. Is this too normie? Is this bubble really normie? I'm not in the normie bubbles, right? Like I'm in the underground bubbles. Is this like, is this a normie, super normie bubble Minecraft? It must be to have 30 million followers. You got to be in the normie bubble, right? America. But before I'm I assuming if he like held hands with George, like the internet would melt. Did I had to say a very sad goodbye to all of my friends from England. Yeah, I'm leaving to him. Oh, wait. Who's this? Don't we know his face? Who's this? Who is this? Is this Wilbur? We know this face. Who is this? Who is this? Is this this Wilbur guy? America. Oh, okay. <laughs> now what do you guys think about him? Do you guys have insight? Because I covered his story. And I think he sounds really toxic, to be fair, so did Shelby. But to be fair, I don't think like healthy people are in toxic relationships. I think you have to be a certain level of toxic to be in a toxic relationship. But I also think he sounded like mostly the bad part of the toxic relationship. Like he definitely had to work on his shit. Do you guys like Wilbur or not? Because I don't know anything about them. I just reviewed the video. And I feel like he seems, I feel like none of these people have tools to be better at what they want or communicating. So what do we think about Will Bear? Like bad, good, don't like him, like him, just needs like therapy. What is it? Now that I said my goodbyes. Oh, y'all hate him. Damn. Okay. I was finally off. After years of waiting, I was finally going to America. I got to the airport like four hours early, so I had time for breakfast and also to check out. We can't sit with him. No, we hate him. Man child. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Has he gotten any better? Like, does he like, you know what I mean? I think he's on a break to get help. Okay. Interesting. Super toxic still? That's a bummer. Yeah, he seemed pretty toxic in the way that Shelby explained their relationship, for sure. Which, again, I believe in redemption for toxicity, so no big deal. But, like, obviously, like, you got to do better, though, right? The plane. Plane. It's flight time. It's flight, like time. flight time. Let's go. I got one of those fancy plane tickets where you can put a... Okay, don't be mad. I'm going to skip a little bit. To that. All right, take my bag now. Take both of them. Is I'll this happening? No, who's this? Play everyone. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> who's this? Who's this? I'm on the wrong side. Yeah, are you like an idiot? <laughs> no, I'm not an idiot. We have it the other way around. I had a surprise for you all this time. Wait, really? Yes. What the? You <laughs> <laughs> almost hit me in the face with that. Oh my god. You made it to Florida. We're in Florida! Okay, I've only been in Florida once, and honestly, like, my brother just moved there too, which is pretty exciting, actually. So this is sap, sap nap. Okay. Sap nap. Okay. We have to pay homage. The best singer, songwriter, and producer. <laughs> I wear a mask with a smile for hours at a time. Still you can see I try. Wait, am I gonna get demonetized right now? Everybody like this dream? Wait, is this dream? Wait, I've never heard dreams music. Is this dream? Am I gonna get demonetized? Wait, is this sap nap? Who sings? Wait, should I call someone? Oh, 
this is nice. That's Dream Song. Oh, Dream's pretty good. Okay, Dream's pretty good. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. Oh. Is that Carl? No, who is that? Hello! Yeah. We did it! I'm in Florida! It's real, it's real! Who's that? <laughs> it's not real, I'm in the UK. All right, <laughs> welcome home. Oh, we're in. Oh, Quackity? Carl and Quackity? Okay, I know Carl because he's from Mr. Beast, right? Oh, no, it's Quackity. Oh, God, it's Carl. See, I'm getting different text messages. Who's who? So it's been like almost three years waiting for this moment. Are you excited? Yeah. You nervous? He's literally right in that house he's right there. right in there. You nervous? A little bit. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. You want me to go and get him? Yeah, go get him. Dream. Clay, he's yeah. here. I brought him. <laughs> you excited? I am very nervous. Nervous <laughs> and excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I'm doing excited hops. It's a big day, an exciting day. <laughs> it's nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. Day. Big day. So they're um, they're obviously like meeting Dream. They're not showing his face. That's really nice. I love Carl from Mr. Beast. I love the whole Mr. Beast team. I love Chris. I love everybody. I need a minute. Take your time. This is big stuff. He's gonna be living here forever. Are you gonna go back out and then I'll? Yeah, I'll, I'll just go back out and then wait there with him. I'll be, <laughs> I'm the cameraman for right now. Okay. This doesn't even feel real. This is like, this is weird. <laughs> He's coming. He's... This is like a wedding video. It's very sweet. It's like, it's good feelings, right? Coming. Where's it coming from? There's so many goals. I know there's so many. <laughs> you gotta guess. You find me or something. Are you like setting me up? Hun. Where He's you? behind you. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Is he coming from in there? I think so. Oh my god. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> it's so bright. I can't even see. You're like, you're like a god with the sun. <laughs> now I'm very confused. Oh my god. Wait. 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 Did he not meet him until after the face reveal? So we're seeing the face... So like this is Dream. Oh, they didn't physically meet or see his face till the face reveal? Am I confused? No way! We did it! Yeah. We did it. <laughs> I'm gonna get demonetized, bro. This song. Just get in here! Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah! The dream team is together. The, the dream yeah. team is yeah. together. We 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 did it, just us two. It's all yeah, it's just us. us. He's third wheeling. He's, 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 third he's disgusting. Guy. No one cares about him. Get out of here. Get back in Sam. Sam. Sam is a crucial part. Okay, we'll cut all this out. <laughs> all right, one out. Did this one? Ah! Oh, yeah! Cute. Okay, he posted the video after the face reveal. Okay, okay, I missed it, I missed Terrible. it. Yeah, I guess you gotta go inside, you gotta meet Patches, because the sun's Patches! Up. Oh my god, let's go. Where is she? Where is she? <gasps> she there? There she is. Hello? Patches. Oh, <laughs> It's Cats me. in the chat. <gasps> oh, wow, their first kiss. Wow. You she loves me. Guys... Patches? Come on. Oh, oh, she oh, likes me. Oh, now, now she likes me. <laughs> Oh, she's running. It's a trick. Yeah. Yes. Oh my Together. God. Look, she has a water fountain. This is the most pampered cat you'll ever see. Do you love me? Meow if you love me. Look, look, Patches. <laughs> what is wrong? You better not, bro. Wait, are you actually drinking? You're disgusting. It's my room. <laughs> we got Why are boys so gross? Why would you do that? I love Mau Mau's though, cute. I'm all set up for you, George. All well, my stuff is here. Look, Draw I even have a half drunk bottle of water. <laughs> that is awesome. It's like a worker. <laughs> Look at my awesome bedroom. Um, yeah, this is it. Yeah, dream. <sighs> Join me in the bed. <laughs> well, okay. Wow, they really are queer baiting, aren't they? What little homosexuals, bro? What little tease is Brett? Is George queer? I forgot. I already asked this question, didn't I? Fuck. There is. DNF is not real. This is, <laughs> this is. All right, well, I guess I gotta go get my bags in. And time to live in the dream house. Dream team house. The dream team house, plus Sam Nub. <laughs> Goodbye, gamers. Like and subscribe. <laughs> the curtain just broke. <laughs> Sometimes I think about
that is you. I'm leaving to America. Oh, see. <laughs> All right, cute. Guys, cute lore. Okay, well, um, I came into this video thinking that I would have shit to talk about Dream. And I was ready to run him through the coals. Uh, don't believe everything you see on X or Twitter. You know, treat people kindly and remember that hurt people hurt people. And obviously the internet is full of a lot of hurt people that are willing to lie about other people, I guess. I didn't see any red flags. I'm glad you guys were here to fill me in on the stuff I didn't know. I appreciate that. If you guys are a representation of Dream's community, you seem really nice. But I just, I don't know what to do with this information. You know, given everything we saw about George and Katie, given everything we saw about Wilbur and Shelby, given everything we saw, it seems like there is a complicated, uh, there's like a complicated thing that happens in the Minecraft community, which I think is probably amplified by how young everybody is and how everybody is like n kind of new to fame and money and being young. So, you know, I'm not going to say anyone's like the evilest person ever. I'm going to say it sounds like everyone has a lot of maturing to do, which don't we all? Um, yeah, I didn't see any red flags. I think my heart goes out to anyone who has to deal with false accusations because I know it's so difficult. I've been through it myself and it's never easy and it's really important to have receipts. But more than that, it's really important to know like why we do things. Why do we feel hurt? Why did we hurt people? Why do we lie? Why do we feel hurt by lies? And I think ultimately, you know, I think everyone can always be better or different, but you got to figure out why you want to be better. You know, I don't like pressuring people to be better. I think that's the wrong way to go about it. I think the internet wants to pressure people into being, quote, good people. And I think that's the worst way to go about it. I think you have to ask people, why do you want to be good in the first place? And I don't think good is objective. I think it's a subjective. And so then you've got to ask people, what kind of good do you want to be? Because it's going to look different to everyone around the planet. Not everybody is your culture. Not everybody is your, you know, your lifestyle. Not everybody believes in the God you believe in. And so we have to accept the fact that people around the world will have different beliefs. The question is, why do you believe what you believe? And then why do you expect people to believe it too? I think that's the part that's so difficult for all of us. So, okay, I didn't see any red flags with Dream. Seems nice enough. I didn't see red flags with George. Seems nice enough. Um, honestly, I'm still rooting for Katie to come back from what she has, the way she has dealt with the things with George. I hope Katie, and I thought that spoke so highly of George's personality to not speak too badly about Katie, if at all. And I hope she comes back from it. I hope Shelby's doing better. Um, I hope Wilbur's doing better. He seems to be, if anyone seems to be struggling with toxicity, it seems to be Wilbur. And I don't know if he's still struggling with that. It sounds like he might be based off the chat. But it sounded like out of all the stories I saw from that bubble, Wilbur seemed to have the worst evidence against him. And even that, you know, I could be wrong on that, right? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, with that said, that's all for tonight. Thank you for being here. I do appreciate it. And I will see you guys again tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's Friday. I'll see you guys again tomorrow. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, dun.